All right. Well, we are recording over here on our end, and we are live on the rant, rant em radio dot com episode five thirty one of the Shining Wizard Wrestling Podcast. Dave Lagreca, he's joining us in about ten minutes. He survived. All right. Well, we are Sorry about narrowly. That. He narrowly escaped uh, the beating that Thunder Rosa gave him. Uh, Ice Train from WCW will be joining us. Kevin from the Shining Wizards will be joining us shortly. <laughs> Kevin's joining us right now. He's about to hop in. Keep going. I'm sorry. Um, there's a ton of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, Tony, you watched that Macho Man disaster? Well, it's not so much of a disaster, but we'll get into it. It was interesting. Let's just let's just put that some things. We watched some NWA this week. We watched some MLW. We watched some Impact Wrestling. Uh, big news from SmackDown, big news from Triple A, uh, big news from New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's a big news day. It's Bullet Club Day. <sighs> hmm? yeah, Throw them up. Bullet Club Day. My man Jay at the Quick Check threw up a Bullet Club today. Too sweet me. Too sweet at me. Fuck Quick Check, Jay. No, man. Jay's cool. What makes today Bullet Club Day? This is the day the Bullet Club was formed eight years ago. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Throw them up, baby. How about throw these up? Oh, come on. What is with you and the hate for the Bullet Club? It's not the Bullet Club that I hate. Just fuck Jay White. There you go. No, You know what? Jay White said, fuck you and fuck Tanahasho. <sighs> really? Is this what we're yeah. doing? Today? Really? Yeah, buddy. Well, good for him. Good for Jay White. So we got a big old show with us, us tonight. Whoa! A lot of fun. Oh. I like that. What? I like what you did there. Whoa! God, God, <laughs> hot diggity dog. Woo! And it's all next here <laughs> on the Shining Wizard Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I the following is a presentation of the Shining Wizards Network, broadcasting live on RantiumRadio.com and available on all podcast platforms and at ShiningWizards.com. Follow us on social media at Wizards Podcast. Check out our merchandise at Merch.ShiningWizards.com. Do your Amazon shopping at Amazon.ShiningWizards.com and become a Patreon supporter at Patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast. As always, we thank you for your continued support. And now, enjoy the show. This is Ian Riccoboni, the voice of Ring of Honor, and you're listening to the Shining Wizard Podcast. What's up, fuckers? I love the big package. And he's got those smelly balls. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking loser. Fuck the Shining Wizards. Well, 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 as if you couldn't tell, the Shining Wizards are back and you're going to hell. We got Ice Train going to freeze all that shit over. And Dave LaGreca, his titties must be sore. Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast, where it's wrestling talk. Talk about, are you stealing my Wednesday night doing rap, bro? I'm doing a little rap because I'm back. I got my DDP yoga shirt on and I'm going to smack your ass, baby. Wow. No so bitches you, you and hoes in my rhymes. I keep it clean, sucker. You, you could have worked after over. You could have worked in Thunder Rosa. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> Ice Train's joining us tonight at 730. Dave LaGreca joining us shortly. Boys, we got an action-packed show. We got so much to cover, so many guests. I don't even know what to do with myself. I don't know how I feel about your new microphone. Why? You don't like it? Doesn't sound good? Sound. I mean, I can hear you now, so that's a problem. Oh, okay. Thanks. Kevin, how are you? Kevin's frozen. He's frozen in time. Because Ice Train's coming. I'm um, frozen. Yes, you are. Video. There you go. Your head just moved. There, your eyes blinked. Kevin's alive. He's a live boy. Yay. Oh, I'm aces, baby. I love it. Ice train. Na, 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 na. Ice train. 
This is gonna be a good one. Ice Train is Ice, Ice Train is one of my like <clears throat> low key like all time favorites. Like top so five? legit. Top five. Well, we'll find out after tonight. This oh, is... a pre- maybe a premonition. A premonition. How you guys doing? What's going on? What's shaking? My titties are shaking. That's not new. That's that's always the case. That's nothing new. When Matt says what's new, you can't say something that's been happening forever. No, he said what's shaking. He didn't say what's new. That's a good point. All right, what's new, T Donk? Uh, watched a lot of interesting uh, wrestling related things this past weekend. Uh, I did. I did the A and E back to backs. I did the Jerry the King Lawler finding your treasures episode, and I also did. The any biography on the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Are you wearing a Macho Man shirt tonight, by the way? I am. I am. Sweet. You dressed for the but occasion. Kevin got like this it. for me. Kevin got me this sweet cutoff. See, Kevin's a good guy. You talk a lot of shit about him, but he comes through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he always comes through. <laughs> Kevin, comes how are you doing this week? Fantastic. Yeah, just that's asked, it. Fantastic. Asked and answered. All right, fair enough. Well, Dave LaGreca should be joining us soon. Uh, For those not in the know or for those listening for the first time, you're not familiar with the Dave LaGreca saga. He uh, got a mangina and he got upset because Thunder Rosa said, look, don't because look, we've been down this road. I've said, hey, wear our shirt somewhere and people don't do it. I don't get butthurt about it. I'm not trying to fight people. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. And after today, after today's busted open. I think it's all going to Dave's head. So he, Southern Rosa said she was going to wear a Dave LaGreca guy t-shirt. Maybe I might be a little salty too. Cause I got a fucking three XL. Mm. I don't, I can't, that's, that's a blanket for me. What am I going to do with a blanket? Dave LaGreca t-shirt. He went on down to Texas Saturday night. He got his ass beat. Sure did. He cuts a hell of a promo. I give him all the respect in the world. I took some chops from Danny Moff. I would rather take a Danny Moff chop than a Thunder Rosa chop. He was you took, you took a chop from Danny Moff. You didn't yeah, and you know what? I'd rather take that. Look, Dave. I, is took, I took like fire. seven chops from him twenty years ago. Dave is playing with fire. He's insulting the women of Mission Pro. He's insulting Thunder Rosa. Tony, you know you're a married man, right? You don't shit where you eat and you don't fucking upset a woman because they get that crazy weird strength where, you know, like if a fucking car fell on their baby, they pick that car up. They don't know why they'll never be able to do it again, but they get crazy strength. And if he pisses Thunder Rosa off enough, he's going to get his fucking dick kicked out his asshole. I wonder what it would take to be able to harness the energy and the strength of a woman whose baby is underneath a car. Like, imagine we could harness that kind of power. Right, you've heard those stories, though, right? Of course. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I had like a signed, you know, action figure that was about to get run over by a car, I'm pretty sure I could lift up a car. You think so? You think oh, you yeah. get that was, adrenaline rush? Yeah, if it was like a Miz autographed Elite, like to Kevin, my best friend ever, you know, I'd probably lift up a car for that. You mean you don't have one of those? No, 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 no. Shit. Yeah, he's slacking. Let's write Kevin, that down I'm- for Kevin's birthday. Kevin, how many wrestling best friends do you hope you have? Oh, I have like 25 at least. A lot of best friends, buddy. Oh, well, listen, I'm a very popular guy. One of which who was on the Macho Man biography. Did you catch it, Kevin? I did not. I heard it was a clown show, though. Oh, 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 you guys, this is all on me tonight. I I love it. I had to work last night. It's a freaking documentary. What do you want? I'm not watching every single A&E show that fucking pops on TV. I haven't, I haven't I still haven't seen the Piper one or the Austin one. You're fucking yeah, slapping, dude. Calm down, calm down. Jeez. Kevin. Jesus. Well, Kevin, if you would have known that your good Macho buddy Macho. Brian Myers was on the Macho Man episode, would you have watched it? He just doesn't respond to me. Are you guys there? I'm here. Kevin's out. I don't know what happened. No, he's blinking. Can he hear you? I don't know. <laughs> Kevin! I'm, I'm, fr- I'm frozen, man. My internet's all sorts of crazy. Well, Brian Myers was on the uh, Macho Man episode, which I watched. Which was... Yeah, well, but I hear it's like a rat. I, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole before no. Dave calls in. You know, like this is this I is hear serious. You. I, I got a lot of questions. 
it, it, it's 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 a uh, it's interesting. I'll I'll leave it at that. It's interesting. Yeah. I'll get fired. I saw, up some, I'll get I saw up some mixed reviews out there. So well, uh also watched the Jerry Lawler thing, which was pretty interesting. Our our buddy Bill Apter makes a uh, an appearance. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to check any of those out yet. I need to carve out a couple hours. There's only so much wrestling I can convince my wife to let me watch while she's in the room. They're kind of cool. And the guy who goes along with with the stars when they look for the memorabilia, his name is AJ. He's apparently a developmental guy from NXT who's also like into like collecting. So completely knowledgeable but this guy stepped in shit like dude he got to go around with steve austin he got to go around with the macho with that with the macho man jesus with uh with the undertake with the undertaker and kane and he also got to travel around with jerry lawler like how fucking great is that who falls into a gig like that where they're a developmental wrestler and they're traveling around with these legends looking for memorabilia shit sign me up for that yeah well you know he's a developmental talent who probably should be at the performance center practicing instead of traveling the world looking at memorabilia <laughs> yeah but come on dude triple h says to you i want you to be the one to go traveling around like you're gonna pass that up hell no, no. hell no but i mean someone like you might be better suited for it you are you are a wrestling historian dare i say how do we get how do we get the title wrestling historian how do we get it right like when kevin does his comedy show in june can it be like Kevin Grief, a wrestling historian, comedian slash wrestling historian? Why couldn't it be? Kevin knows I don't know who history. decides when you become a wrestling historian. That's that's a fair question. Right? Like, like you, I watch all the we watch all these sports shows. There's always like baseball historian, uh, mm-hmm. murder historian. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it comes with. Yeah, the murder historians are very, very around on the sports shows. But there's always a historian for everything. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess you have to be around uh, whatever you're going to be a historian about. If not, you've got to have access to and have been read on the literature that makes up whatever you're, whatever you're proclaiming to be a historian about. Something that maybe you've debated with other people. To try to to try to get answers about things. I mean, I guess it's not like one. I guess it's not like just one thing where it's like, you know, oh, I know about Survivor Series, so bam, I'm a historian on Survivor Series. It's like, well, maybe, but there's more to it than that, you know. Can I take a test? Who would give you the test? That's the thing. The wrestling history historian society. See, that's the other thing too. It's kind of like the creation of this country. Like, who decided? Like, who's going to be in charge? Like. Who should be there to form the government? Everybody just looks around the room and goes, you know, Ben Franklin's pretty smart. Let's get him to put in his, his, his two cents. Or like, you know, George Washington, he's a pretty damn good military leader. Maybe he's got some ideas on how to run the government. I don't know. I guess it's just a matter of like, whoever's at the beginning gets to, gets to plot the course of history. I mean, isn't that how it works? I don't know. I, I want to be, I think we should be wrestling historians. I, 10 years I, as a podcast. Come on. I don't disagree with you, but yeah, but not only that, dude, like we've each one of us has at least 30, at least 30 years being a fan, watching, reading the magazines, buying the almanacs. You know what I'm saying? We're not dumb people. You heard it here first. I mean, you can, you may speak for yourself. I don't have a fucking leg to stand on. If you've listened to any podcast that I've ever been on. I can't even speak the English language. What am I doing lobbying to be a wrestling historian? Well, I mean, I remember when you did John Carlo's uh, podcast about what, eight years ago. I was so drunk for that. Why did you like, why dude, if you weren't drunk, you probably would have been mellow Matt. You probably could have like sounded like you knew your shit. Like, yeah, but we did. It was after a shining wizards episode. So you got, you got, you got the load on during our show. Is that the thing? Usually that's how it goes. Yes. Pretty much. Uh-huh. Pretty much. Where is this fucking Dave LeGrec? Is he running from us now? <laughs> I'm putting him in right now. He just joined the queue. <laughs> Dave, what's going on, brother? How you what's feeling? What's going? How are you? Listen, before we get into anything else, Matt and I were just talking about this, and I want your opinion. 
What makes somebody a wrestling historian? I, that's a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> Neither did we. So join the club. How's your How's your titties feeling? You feeling all right? All right. So, ooh, all right. You're yeah. healing up. You're healing up. Healing up a little bit. Did you at least enjoy all of your other time in the great state of Texas? I didn't do anything. I I uh, I flew in first thing. Friday morning, I had a 6 a.m. flight, so I got up at 2.30 in the morning oh. because I didn't know what the air, but it's the first time taking a, a, a flight during the whole COVID stuff, yeah. so I wasn't sure what to expect, and I'm I'm over an hour away from the airport now where I live, so um, I got up at 2.30, then I got there, and then like I took like a nap for like an hour and a half at the hotel, and then I went to the gym, and I was there until about 9.30, <laughs> ate dinner, got up the next morning, went to the venue, did the did the show, and then went. I had a six a.m. flight the next day. Oh God! Yesterday how far, morning. Uh, how far did you get when you you know? How far did you run since you ran out of the ring like a little bitch? How far did you go? <laughs> no. I'm not talking no. to you anymore, Matt. I listened today. I'm to already talking, open, Dave. I was running errands. You. And your co-host, you're you're looking for trouble. She's gonna beat the dog shit out of you again. Matt, did you watch the match or not the match? The segment, I guess. I don't know what the hell you call it. Did you watch I think it? You tried to hit somebody in the head with a goddamn bottle, Dave. You're out of control. And how many t-shirts do you own that you can just rip them in half? Because I get them for free, Matt. You know, you give me your shirts for anything. How many shining wizard shirts have you think I ripped up? I don't know. You ripped off the one on Saturday. You ripped off the red shirt this morning on Busted Open. You're just, you're like Hulkster, brother. Hey, we got the same uh, shirt on. Holy shit. Yeah, and maybe Not both yet. you guys could rip them off. I and then I was shirt. watching uh, ESPN and Peter Rosenberg had the Macho Man t-shirt on too. Great minds think alike. That's, That's right. right. Got my uh, yeah. Peter Rosenberg t-shirt on right now, actually. Peter Rosenberg was all over right. the Macho Man uh, biography this yeah. past season, So, what do you guys think of the uh, Macho Man biography? I should probably ask the only the one person that watched it. Oh, Tony, Tony, what'd you think of it? Um, Hulk Hogan was contradicted quite a few times. The most notably was talking about WrestleMania three, where he goes. Yeah, Randy wasn't out to steal the show. Cut to Ricky Steamboat. Oh, yeah. Randy and I went out to steal the show that night. It's like, all right, really? So we're burying the Hulkster. Then why is Bubba the Love Sponge getting I, time on this thing? Why? I have no idea. I don't understand. I, did, I was not a big fan of it. And I love the Stone Cold one, and I love the Roddy Piper one. Last night, I didn't even watch the whole thing. I turned it off about halfway through. Oh. I, I wasn't crazy about it. So you didn't get to see it yeah. all the second half when he when uh, they interviewed Gorgeous George. I'm gonna watch the the second half before. Well, after I get done with you guys before Raw, and the way Matt's talking, this is gonna be maybe my quickest segment ever on Shining Wizards. Listen, don't listen, be, listen. Don't, nah, 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 don't, nah, nah. don't talk to Matt. Nah, you can talk to me all night, Dave. You're you and me were boys. I am very concerned for Dave's well being. Look, I get it. He was a huge draw for Mission Pro. All right. The, the biggest office, ever. The biggest gate they've ever had, right? Ever. But you dis you said you that all the women, Dave, you're married. You've been married a couple times. You're fucking gonna piss off all the women in the locker room and Thunder Rosa. You're asking for trouble, man. Matt, what did I Matt, what did I say about the women in the locker room? You said they better thank you. Yeah. What's wrong with that's not putting it that's not putting yeah, that's them not down. That did not sound very I, I went on the I went on the air today. I put them over. I said I had a great time on the show there. I thought they were awesome, but they still owe me a thank you. Mm, I agree. You're big, the biggest house ever. You. Sold yeah, out. Kind of, Sold kind of, out, by the way, Matt, with severe thunderstorms. Severe th that there was warnings to stay. Oh, home. Dave, I think there I think the biggest thunderstorm was actually in that ring. It's very possible. <laughs> will, you be back, will you be back on June 12th? No, not June 12th. I mean, it's my birthday. We have, we have, things have to be signed. There needs to be contracts. You know, I'll tell you money what, exchanged. I'll tell you what, Dave. 
I got a whole new respect for you, my friend, because boy, oh boy, you could, you, first of all, you could promo your butt off and you could also take a beating like nobody I've ever seen. The promo seen. was hot. Yeah. Promo was great. Really Did you, uh, like, obviously you guys saw that they were pelting me with stuff. They were throwing stuff in the ring, right? Like yeah. NWO status. Do you know what they were throwing? I do. Yeah. What? Snickers. Well, you know, Matt, because you listen to the show, but these guys don't. What do you mean? Um, Come on, dude. <laughs> Dave, right. you deal with I professionals like here for God's sakes. Like they Dave. were throwing Snicker bars because Snickers oh. is the sponsor of Busted Open. They were throwing Snicker bars in the ring. I got Snickers over. Yeah, I don't like how the podcast isn't available the same day. It's not available till like the next day. Is that true? I think so. At least where I try to find it. <laughs> Would you? Are you sure about that, Kevin? Oh, Maybe, Kevin you should no. talk. Maybe you should look before you talk. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I look. <laughs> Like, I tried to find, what was it? That, was it Jericho? It was, no, it was, you know what it was? Because you came on our show the night before, and then you, and then Bully Ray was like, weren't you on the Shining Leprechauns or something like that? And then uh, I tried to find it, and I couldn't find it. I found it because I was listening live that day, and thank you. To well, I don't have serious. What do you want from me? Uh, so, Dave, you were all busted up busted open as you were did you go to the doctor when you got home not for anything like you know like like the welts or anything but she was licking her hands and like putting them on you dude like i would have gotten some shots after that ow well first of all i you know i i'm fully vaccinated i got both my vaccinations so fully vaccinated i know i know tony's against that but i <laughs> Jesus. I'm defending you, dude. Come on. Uh, you know what? I feel I know where Dave's mind. Dave, right now, he is trying to talk to us, but in Dave's mind, he knows that when he's done with this, he has to watch fucking Monday Night Raw. And if you yeah. the last week, he yeah. f- fucking lost his mind. Dave, I just did. Read the fucking results, man. Don't waste your time. It's hot. I garbage. did. I lo- dude, I lost my I lost my shit. I know it was a- uh, last week. It was That's hysterical. A- I like coming on with you guys, though. You guys put me in a good mood, but you like came at me right away, Matt. Like right off the bat, you're like you ran Dave, like a I'm bitch. I'm worried about you, Dave. She's not if you're just worried about me. Away, you I ran like a bitch. You did run out of the ring like a bitch, Dave. No, I didn't. I you ran. You hit somebody with a bottle and then you ran away. Yeah, I don't he care. Security he... guard. Who gives a shit? I'm yeah. never seeing that guy. But you again. were trying to hit a security guard. You're trying to hit Thunder Rosa. That's what you think. Yeah, you know? I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah, maybe that guy was getting handy with Thunder Rosa and Dave was trying to protect her. That's right. Oh, so Dave just did a whole complete. I'm not gonna hit a woman. I'm not gonna hit a woman. Listen, Dave came in. Not dead in 2021, Matt. Come on, now. Somebody actually tweeted out today, like, I can't believe Sirius XM hasn't fired Dave LaGreca (laughs) because he tried to hit a woman with a with a bottle. Dave, you're not woke. That's why. (laughs) I was like, really? First of all, you know. People need hobbies. Jesus Dude, Christ. People, people are insane, man. But people seem to really like it, though. So there was a lot of nation members there. Traveled oh, yeah. all across the country to get there, which was really cool. That's insane. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's awesome. You, that's you great came, stuff. You, you, you came, you made a statement, and you got out of there. There's something to be said for that. You did being, what you... Yeah, I mean, I have, like, I have, like, bruises on, like, on my arms. I got bruises, like, on the sides of my stomach. My stomach is killing me. Like, I think there's something internally broken inside me from that drop kick she gave me. And obviously, oh. my chest is all jacked up. But, dude, I was, I took a beating. Yeah. I mean, the, you, uh, the, the fists alone, she was dropping some, some, some bombs in there on you, sadly, sadly to say. Yeah, it was rough. Now, did you have to talk to Mark Henry today after the show and be like, Mark, I love what your idea, but I cannot go promotion to motion and get the shit beat out of me. Because he was like, Dave is great. You send him everywhere. He sells out the house. I don't know. Maybe, a, maybe a managerial role or something. Maybe I'd be a good no. manager, maybe. No, I, because he, I, I agree. I agree, Dave. And I was trying to think who, like, while watching that, I was trying to think who you reminded me of. And I can't for the life of me. It's on the tip of my tongue. Have you gotten any um, any mentions of, like, who, like, people thought that you reminded them of in that little weasely heel Type no, role. I, I, because I was just me. 
I wasn't trying to be like nobody told me like I I got a lot. I was very, very happy, though, even though I got my ass kicked. A lot of people like praised it and a lot of people like, you know, Matt, I mean, uh, Mark, you know, told me afterwards how proud he was of me and Bully was proud of me, too. And so I'm very happy about the way it came off. But I took a beat, man. I wasn't expecting to take that bad of a beating, but I did. I she's sure not. She's like... a mean spirited person. She still owes me an apology and a thank you. Oh, Dave, you're still. I 100 percent agree. Dude, I saw the back and forth on Twitter with you two. This is not done with her. I'm no. worried about your well being. By, by by no stretch is this over. Oh my God, Dave! Please, as your friend, I'm worried about you. My plan A didn't work with the security guard, so I have to think of something a little bit better next. I mean, time. you would have been better off with the three of us being your security guards. Those guys look like you just picked them up at the Dunkin' Donuts. Pretty much. <laughs> I would, but I mean, but, and you guys would have been better. I would have, I would have, you know what? I would have taken a beating for you, Dave. I would have jumped right on you if there was like a, like there was a bomb coming. They got, they got their asses kicked. They yeah. did get their asses kicked. This is true. Do you though. get, uh, do you get any residuals for her Lagreca sucks eggs T-shirt? Dude, I don't know who made that one, but I don't get anything. I got marketing. nothing. What the marketing, fuck? come on, you got to sell them. And I, I didn't bring a lot of shirts with me. I was stupid. I brought 15 shirts with me. I should have brought like 200 shirts with me. I brought 15. It's so they sold. I sold out my shirts before they even opened up general admission. I'm such an idiot. Wow. You just send them to your pro wrestling tea store. Yeah. We'll see how that works. Yeah, that one's really. LaGreca sucks egg shirts on the, on the pro wrestling tea shop. Come on. Come on. I'd order one on the 3XL just for shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. Holy no, shit. but Dave, all kidding aside, I thought your promo was awesome. Uh, it's And you said it on Busted Open. Like, it's crazy. You are very knowledgeable in the world of pro wrestling. You do a very successful pro wrestling radio show. And then there's people who go to the WWF and get paid, and they can't cut a f- promo for their fucking lives and here you got it your promo was great your cadence was great your timing was great you let people throw fucking snickers in the ring like it was excellent and i just wanted to (laughs) well thanks i know you got it all day on busted open but you were one thing i i appreciate one thing i i i did the only thing i did was before i got to the ring was what i was gonna be my opening line like i just needed the opening line so once i had the opening line I just did everything off the top of my head. And obviously I planned the Britt Baker shirt underneath the Thunder Rosa shirt, but I didn't like, play, I didn't think out the, I just did it off the top of my head. That's always the best way to go. Cause if you overthink it, you're going to screw up or something. I think that's the problem with like raw is that everything's scripted. So like it doesn't sound authentic because they're trying to remember what they have to say next. When you kind of just do it off the top of your head, it comes off so much better. And but I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. It, yeah, it, see, it, see, Matt, Matt's, uh, Matt's backtracking here on his uh, first. He calls you a bitch, then he compliments you. It's, uh, it's all. Hey, I'll say this, uh, Matt, and you want to call say it running like a bitch. Like I, I, I left there on my own two feet. I wasn't carried out. I wasn't thrown out. Like I left there on my own two feet. Like so that you know, this is Thunder Rose is like the one it, top five best women wrestlers yeah. in 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 the country right now. They, who, who are you putting above her? Charlotte, Not, Sasha, maybe. It's a short. Not, it's a. It's a short list. That's it's a sure. real short list. Um, real quick. Um, w- w- I know you've been involved in the business before uh, on independence and stuff like that. Was this like to you like? I, I know it, we're not we're far from over from it, but was this for like? Is this going to like, be one of those five minute questions yep. you ask, Kevin? Yep. <laughs> that was it. I was done. Oh, damn it, Dave! What was the question? What was this? Was this like a top like three <laughs> moment of like as a fit? God damn it! I hate you! I hate you all! It, it's only with him! It's only with him! Uh, <laughs> you get the gist of the question, Dave. I didn't hear a question. I didn't hear a question. <laughs> All right, does it, again, Kevin. I'm does sorry. It, I'm sorry. Does it does it go up from here? Could it get any better? Or do you think this was a top like moment in your career? Um. That's actually a really good question, Kevin. I gotta be honest with you. Um, 
because I was thinking about that on the plane because, and, and I think I talked about it with you guys before, like my all time favorite moment was the 10 year anniversary party, which you guys were at, mm -hmm. which I appreciate you coming, coming to. Your, it was not near as good as your anniversary. I loved your anniversary party at that brew house. Was that was fun, awesome. Man. I still have okay. that shirt. That's because you you can rem you remember our anniversary show and you don't remember your anniversary. <laughs> I don't. Because <laughs> I didn't drink that much at your anniversary show. I only had like a couple of beers. But, um, but that was like a career highlight, the 10-year anniversary show. This was close. It, it, it's either number two or like, you know, it's like 1B. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it might have been... You know, because the 10 year anniversary party was like a celebration of, of the show and the nation. And it was awesome. But this was great for a lot of different reasons. One was with everything that's going on with COVID. I never thought like who I wasn't sure if I'd ever have the opportunity again to be in front of that many people. You know, like this future is, was so uncertain through most of this time that I didn't know if we'd ever have an opportunity like that again. And then the other part of it was actually to get into the ring and do something. You know, I've been a referee a couple of times, stuff like that. Like, at, you know, at the ECW arena with Tommy and Bully against Orange Cassidy and Sonny Kiss was really cool. But this was like different to be like a performer, uh, you know, to, to have that promo and, and to get physical and stuff like that. That was wild. And then the other one was like, I'm growing up, I was a big world-class championship wrestling fan. That was my favorite was world-class and being a cowboy fan and everything like to go to Texas and step into a ring in Texas was, was pretty, was pretty sick. So yeah, that was like, it's a great question, Kevin. I would say it's probably my, my number two moment so far in my career. And I, and I've been fortunate to have a lot of really good moments, but that's probably a solid number two. Well, Dave, I just, uh, I hope, uh, I don't know, man. Are you dropping the mic? You dropping the mic after that question, Kevin? I'm ta I'm tapping out. I can't, I can't do it again. <laughs> He's saving all his questions for ice train. What time's ice train coming on? Seven thirty. All right, good. That means I can bounce. Yeah, and then you can get ready to watch <laughs> fucking shitty raw. Are you Dave, gonna run, watched, Are you gonna I, run out of here like you ran out of the ring? No. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> no. No. Not at all. Uh, Dave, we're just, I'm just busting your balls. I, I know you are, dude. It was great. I really, dude, after that segment, though, I had such an adrenaline rush. Like, I didn't yeah. feel any pain. I didn't feel any pain, man. I was like, the only time when she was giving me those, those, those rib shots, though, I was like thinking, I was like, when is this going to stop? Like, please, please stop hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, please stop hitting me. To, to, like did, everybody did you, was did, saying, like, man, you sell so good. You sell better than most like wrestlers. I wasn't selling, man. And, and, and that's like, what I was gonna ask you. Did you have any say in the matter in that? In terms of like, hey, like, please stop, like, please stop. Did you have any say nah, dude, in the just, matter at all? I just ran with it, man. That drop yeah. kick, dude, was legit. That drop yeah. kick into the corner, holy shit. Completely knocked the wind out of me. Well, you were up against the buckles, weren't you? Yeah. So you should have came up a little bit. Should have came up just a little bit. I don't know. That might have been worse. No, nah, because then at least you'll get a little bit of a bounce. But when you're up against the wall like that, it gets rougher. Did you uh the was what well, I know the answer because I've been there too. It was the double chop the worst or the first one? Oh, the double, the double chop was worse, but I, it, it actually wasn't, it, it stung obviously, but it wasn't the worst of what happened. It was probably the least of like the punishment I took, if that makes sense. Like the drop kick, the punches that they were like much more like painful than the two chops. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like you're going to, it's going to get any better for you. The way you uh, you guys are still going at it though on the on the internet and uh, you know you came across uh, busted open today like a like a very uh, cocky prick. Well, because you heard the show like at the beginning, bullies, bully Gabby and Ed. None of the three who went, they didn't. None of them went. 
Like they were all talking shit. Like they didn't even attempt to go. Mark went. Ryan McKinnell flew from Vegas. He went. I had a bunch of fans from New York, New Jersey. Like, dude, dude I, I met three fans at the airport on the way home that were there. I was like, they can't, they flew in from Jersey to come see that. Like, that's crazy. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's act, that's amazing. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I'm just, nah, dude, yeah. it was, it was pretty, the, the, our, the nation members are like the best. They're, they're so cool. I'm still, I'm still worried about your future. Yeah, a little concerned. I'll be, I'll be, don't be worried. Don't be too worried, Matt. You're not worried, Matt. You're the one that brought in uh, Thunder Rosa last week when I came on. Yeah, I I know how to book good good shows. You added fuel to the fire, is what you did. Look, man, I got to get the rub somehow. That's always what I'm looking for. And and look, I, I know a couple things. Oh, Bust it open. Bust it open. Nine to noon. Channel 156, Fight Nation, every oh, day. Oh, are you guys coming to my Tuesday Night Trivia next at, week? At, and at the Wrestling Collector in Stockholm? Yeah, so you coming? I work Tuesday nights, unfortunately, at the restaurant. I was actually up there Friday, though. I took the trip uh, up to the Wrestling Collector to check it out. Tony, Kevin, you guys coming? Sure. When is it? Next Tuesday. Tuesday night. Next eight to, tomorrow? Eight to, eight, to, eight to ten. Not next week, next Tuesday, the eleventh. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I'll, some I'll, things I'll around. Yeah, for days. You're not coming. I could tell right now, Matt. <laughs> I could tell man. right from like the way that they they're like, <laughs> oh yeah, they're not coming. <laughs> okay. There's no shot that Kevin and Tony come to the show. It's a dangerous place to go, that oh. wrestling collector store. I was hey, there it's Friday. A, it's a, it's a, Dude, it is, man. Like, you want to destroy drive. all you your gotta, money. You got to coax me out of leaving West Orange every now and then. Yeah, and this store is like two minutes from your front door, isn't it? No. Five? No, it's like it's like about 25 minutes. No, that's not so bad. No, but what, what's mm. your excuse? Um, come hang out, dude. I used to come to your, to your house all the time to do the show. This is true. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for <laughs> what? What you don't want to go? Truck if season, dude. If I wasn't working the fucking pizza truck, I'd go. Of course you would. Uh, my I'll only go, night I'll off. You, Monday. I'll give you a Dave. I'll give you another Dave Lagreca shirt. You come. Ooh. They're gonna have. They're gonna have daddy soda. We could. You could be a part of it. We could do like trivia stuff. It'd be right. fun. I'll. I'll see if I can work it out, Dave. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make an effort to go. What I the promise. fuck, Matt? There's Matt. All right, Matt, I'm going to say this right now. If Kevin and Tony don't come uh, next Tuesday to the wrestling wrestling collector, I'm not coming back on the show again. What? Ever. Dave. Damn. Dude, I just flew from Buda, Texas home. Haven't spent any time with my family, but I still came on the show tonight. So many time for you. You want to? I used to come. Here? I used to drive to the house all the time to do the show. You can't drive like 30 minutes to a fucking wrestling store when you love wrestling to come hang out with me when I'm doing the trivia stuff. It's more like it's not like I'm at, it's not like I'm asking you to give blood. It's not like I'm, you know, I'm I'm, t- I'm I'm asking you to go to a wrestling store 30 minutes from your house. Am I wrong here, Matt? No, they're on their own. I can't nah, look it's like, again. It's like it's like it's like it's like 50 minutes, Dave. Kevin, look at look at behind you. Look at look at look at the life you lead. You're gonna tell me you can't take a couple hours out of a Tuesday night. I'm not even asking for a weekend night. I'm not asking. I'm not saying Fridays. A Tuesday night, Matt, is what I'm saying, right, Matt? Yeah, I hear you. If, <laughs> if it wasn't buy one get one free at Pizza Vita, I'd be there. What's Kevin doing on a Tuesday night, Matt? I have no idea. <laughs> Kevin, what are you doing on a Tuesday night? Uh, watching. Well, I would be watching Impact, but probably watching NXT or. Uh, that's about it. Or if the Devils play, that's it. You don't think they have a TV at the Wrestling Collector? I know they, they do have at the Wrestling they Collector. Have a TV, you know, because they do. They got big screen TV. Yeah, hang that's... out, hang out with me, Kev. We hang right, out. You know what? You know what, Dave? This sounds like something. All right, you know what? We'll get a pizza. I like it. What about what? What's it? What's the Daddy Soda situation now? I don't know. I, that I can't tell. I can't speak for that. It's not my store. 
but we can get some pizza, no? All right. This, this is Tommy Fierro's place, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I get that. Right, He's well, a good we'll, dude. We'll have to oh, I'm, I'm a big pizza guy. You're not a Tommy Fierro guy? Come on. Tommy Fierro's a legend around these parts. Tommy was at our anniversary show. Yeah, yep. he was. So you can't make the effort for Tommy? Tommy came to your anniversary show. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Dave, you're making me feel real bad now. Well, I, Tony, guys let's do it. All right. If Kevin, I, I Kevin want to make sure people show. I think I think. So I'm anyway, in. so for the people who are you know that are watching this show now, listening, it's the Wrestling Collector in Stockholm, New Jersey, on Route 23. I'm doing trivia Tuesday night trivia TNT. I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna be having. I have some Lagreca shirts. The store is a the store is awesome. It's an is awesome this, store. Is this a weekly thing or is this like let's give it a shot? I think I might. I, I don't. You know what? I'm not going to make any announcement until until May 11 Tuesday night. Then you'll know. Then you'll have Ooh. my answer if you come. Ooh, I'm not like coming that. out, Matt. I'm telling you right now, I'm not coming back on if these guys don't come. You I'm have the throw, excuse, Matt. You're working. You're working. I'm just going to throw this I out there, it, dude. You got to get it's a buy buy two get one free night, right? So buy one get one free. Oh shit! Yeah, dude, you can't pass that. Now up. I'll throw this out there. If you all want to do a rain dance for next Tuesday, maybe my truck event gets rained out. We'll, th- we'll jump in the sport. Matt would come. I we'll know Matt was coming. I've been there. I know where I'm going. We'll fucking drive right up there to Stockholm. I got lost going there last time. Like a road trip. GPS took me to some fucking scuba Steve fucking TP looking place first, about a mile before the actual store. Oh, I know what place you're talking about. Yeah, I found yeah. it, though. And thankfully, I wasn't. Here's the problem. I wasn't looking for anything specific, but there was shit there that I definitely would have bought. And I was like, I need to leave because if I come home with more shit, my wife's going to stab me in the neck. Yeah, dude, it's got he's got a shitload of ma- I'm a I'm a mark for a wrestling magazine. He's got a ton of magazines, DVD, VHS tapes like figures. Dude, that Jimmy snook a foam finger. That's up there. I got from from Fierro. Yeah, it's he's awesome. got a lot of foam fingers and stuff there. Yeah, he's got like all those old school '80s uh, stuff. A lot of Attitude Era stuff too. It's a really cool place, Kevin. I mean, Kevin, you you got the big collection behind you. I'm, I know you're gonna see some shit that you like. Oh uh, no, there's no there's no question about that. I'm not I'm not leaving empty handed if I go. That's for damn sure. Yeah, and then trivia. We'll do trivia. See how how much we'll go up against each other in trivia. Be fun. All right, so but can I, if I ask a question, can it can I make it five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, but Kevin, we're not going to have you ask the questions. You can answer the questions. Oh, uh, okay. Listen, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Kevin, I love your question. I said your question was awesome. You were the only one who asked the question. Matt and Tony didn't point. ask any questions. They just Very made comments. Point. You were the only one that. You're, uh, that you're professional enough that you ask the question. You're the, the only one. thing I did when you got on with us was ask you a fucking question. What are you kidding me? That's a great. You point. didn't ask a question. I don't remember that. I Dave, asked you who, what makes a wrestling historian, and you said I don't know. Yeah, but that was like a joke question. That wasn't like wasn't a real a serious That's conversation. True. I want Dave, be- Dave. You've never been more right. I want Kevin to asked a legit, legit question. Kevin asked. I don't like this. Dave comes on. He likes journalists and he hates me and he likes Matt. Now he hates me and Matt and he likes Kevin. What's going on? I love Matt. I love Matt. I love all you guys. You guys are great. I can't. Tony, I, you can't take a little ribbon. Oh, you. Yeah, we're all vaccinated, too. So we're good now. All four. Yeah, dude, we could like who knows what we could do. We could share it. We could share the same cup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at David LaGreca one on Twitter, uh, busted open on Sirius XM 156 Fight Nation Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to noon. Plus, they have the podcast, the master classes. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, busted opens the master's class. Who was your first pick in your fantasy draft, Dave? Uh, good question. It's your first remember. pick. I know. I don't remember, man. A lot of time has happened in between then and now. Uh, I don't remember. Must have not have been a great first pick. No, man, I had a really good first pick. Damn. You don't even have it written down. Oh, you know what? Nick Aldis. 
That's smart. Really? Wow. Smart based, based on your scoring system, very smart. How that- great is that? He's on TV every week. He cuts a promo every week. And whenever he has a match, he wins. Nick yeah. Aldis was my number one. NWA world champion, Nick Aldis. That's a hell of a a booger eater ain't taking that title from him. So, oh, he's got it. Collision course, baby. It's gonna happen. Nah, it's gonna happen. Book- he's home, you know fucking watching TV for the next thirty days. I watch the NWA every single week. Love that show. Love Here's it. Here's my. All right, you ready for my uh, my uh, fantasy team before yes. before you guys kick me off? Nick Aldis, Bianca Belair, Kenny Omega, Ember and Shotzi is my tag team. Deanna Perrazzo and Sheamus. I like it. It's a pretty strong staff. I, I mean, Kenny you're... Omega, because you get mega points for every title victory. He's he holds like four different titles. Yeah. Kenny Omega, three. I think I think your sleeper is probably Diana. Diana too. She she's on TV every week, either yeah. cutting a promo or winning a match. Do do backstage sex count? Yep. Oh oh yeah, Diana's Diana's a sleeper there for sure. I'm I'm excited about my team. <laughs> I like it. The team, I like it. Well, Dave, we you are excited. Are, I know you guys are pushing me off because you got real guests coming on. No, I don't even know. Is he in the queue? Is he even here? He's not in the queue. He's not no, here. He's not here. So there's no rush unless you want to go watch the rest of the documentary and listen to him yes, talk. You need yeah, to he, watch it. He wants out. Is it get? Does it get better the second half? Oh yeah. Follow the course, and then all of a sudden, it's really interesting. Really interesting. All right. So, so just let's just be clear here. You think, Dave, from Tony's uh, description, it's going to get better. Tony enjoys a car crash, though, so it probably is not going to get better. It's All right, we'll find a, out. We'll find a, out. A big stack of dog shit. Wow. I don't know. I've heard like very mixed reviews about it, and I still I don't. Conrad remember. Conrad Thompson like went off on it. Oh, I didn't hear. What did he have to say? I have, to, I have to find the tweet. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But he it. went, why? Wait, wait, why? What do you mean, why? I don't I want you to have to go looking up stuff. I just figured if you had some. God forbid he home, types in Conrad's it. Twitter account and then reads the tweet. Oh, why don't you do that? That's your job on the show, isn't it? <laughs> We're just hanging and talking. We didn't, we didn't go live yet, did we? No, we haven't been live this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. We're on live with Dave LeGregor. <laughs> Kevin, quit oh, again. How, how are those airplane peanuts? Dude, I didn't, I didn't eat nothing, man. Dude, the, dude, legit airports are scary, man. Like scary because they're like empty or just the way everybody is? Dude, empty, completely the opposite, jam-packed. And every flight that I was on, every single seat in the plane was taken. That's fucking crazy. Dude, That's it wild. was like another world, man. That's so wild. Well, you know, I mean, literally everything's opening up. I think New York uh, City said everything's going to be back to normal by like July 1st. So we're, we're almost there. We are almost there. Here, this is what Conrad said. They should have named this the burial of Randy Savage. What a hit job. The last two weeks were puff pieces. Now this kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Oh, boy. It's, and, and it's so weird, though, because you – over the years, like, I feel like Macho Man, even though he was inducted into the Hall of Fame posthumously, like they love and revere him. How did this happen? I'm I'm interested in the Ultimate Warrior one because they com- until he came back, they completely buried like the Ultimate Warrior. Right. That that first DVD that came out like you know 13, 14 years ago, they just completely destroyed the Ultimate Warrior. Bad. Oh, the self destruction, yeah, and they were. Yeah, they oh my up. God, they ripped him in the and but now they make it like he was like one of the greatest of all time. Well, I mean, he is. Give credit where it's due. But oh, then they wanted God. to do the same thing to Bret Hart, and Bret Hart's like, I better fucking step up. I saw what they did to the Warrior. That's the whole. That's the only reason why we didn't get a Bret Hart hit piece because he agreed to become part of it. So what are they gonna do? Hit him when he, when he's actually there, giving him stuff. You know. All right, Dave, are you looking forward to the the Pillman Dark Side this Thursday? Yeah. See, that's another reason, too. Like, the dark side with the, the Savage Elizabeth dark side was, I thought, so much better than the A&E bio. I'm sure. Look, oh, that, whole, 
that last week with the Piper with him, Vince McMahon pretending like he's talking to Piper from hell. Like, I was like, really? Yeah. This is how we're going to fucking start the show? This is so weird. And then Bret Hart saying he's a family man when he wrote about in his book how he had uh, so many affairs while he was on the road. And then Hogan complaining that uh, Piper didn't want to get pinned. And he didn't want to do the job was the most fucking ass backwards thing I've ever heard anyone that- say. You know, I love the Piper one. I thought they did a really, really good job with the Piper one. But A, with the Bret Hart, because the guy would be like, basically, he was having affairs with women on the road because he was bored. And then and and um, then Hogan saying, like, I'm so I'm sorry, like that was going to make it better if Mr. T pinned Piper. How would that have made things better if he would have pinned Piper? And 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 he Piper lost money because he didn't get pinned by Mr. T. How does that make any sense at all? Makes zero sense. It's Hogan. Take it all with a grain of salt. That's what I do. I mean, you can't take anything he says really seriously. So, but that's what Bubba's wife did. <sighs> Dude, that, I, I can't believe they had Bubba the Love Sponge. That is on, the biggest, on that documentary, man. I and look that actually that actually makes me ill to hear this. Like, I don't. What did you think of the whole thing with like the action figures when they introduced somebody new to the show? I didn't get that either. Like, that was kind of weird. Why? Well, they brought in Brian Myers and they had him. And I think maybe it was just some service to him to like, you know, because he's like the action figure guy. But then it was weird. Like, like our truth came on, like our truths biggest contribution was, yeah, the macho man looked like a pimp. And then they show our truths action figure. I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? Yeah, it was weird. Really it was a weird, weird last night was a weird one, man. I thought it, I'm going to finish watching it because I want to definitely maybe it gets better in the second hour. But the first hour was. And a lot of the footage that they had in the first hour was from his DVD, the WWE documentary. Like a lot of that footage was from his documentary that came out. What was that like five years ago, five, six years ago? But was it, uh, any, no, it was Lanny on it at all? Yeah, a lot. Okay. Well, at least he was on it. I mean, it was mostly, it was him, uh, Peter Rosenberg and, and Dan Soder. Who's yeah, Dan Soda was on a lot too. I, I, were they just like we need a guy that does a good Macho Man impression? But like you know Soda- what? Have him do the Macho Man impersonation at the beginning, so everybody knows like the deal. You know, and like I get it. Like Dan Soda knows a lot about the Macho Man. He's been a huge fan. But did we need Dan Soda involved in this? Like it's just really weird who they chose for this whole thing. Like Ricky Steamboat, yes. Lanny Poffo, yes. Showing footage of his mother and father and his mother telling stories about him all good stuff but then it's like our truth and brian myers and and bubba the love Sp- like it, it just yeah it, it was weird i thought peter did a good job though I, i'm a big peter fan no he was fine but it was just like some of the other cast of characters i was just scratching my it's head a, bubba the love sponge just blew me away though it's well your guest is late huh he's not showing i don't know maybe he's not yeah He's in the Ken Patera ballpark right now. Ken Patera oh, no-showed us a couple of Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Ken Patera. And then he sent Tony a Facebook friend request like five days later. I'm That's like, weird. This motherfucker. <laughs> I actually do have to go, though, because I have to pick up my daughter from work. All right. Dave, a pleasure as always at David LaGreca1 on Twitter. Listen every Monday through Friday at Busted Open Radio on 156 Fight Nation Sirius XM. Yes, Dave. You're, I know you're you're working, but if it rains, you're coming. And Kevin and, and Tony, I expect to see you there next Tuesday. The Wrestling Collector, Stockholm, New Jersey, eight to ten. Tuesday night, Tuesday night trivia, TNT, Lagreca shirts. Maybe Daddy sodas. Maybe we'll work on that. Do what? Nothing. We'll do it in the parking. We'll do it in the parking lot. Don't worry yeah, about do a tailgate. it. We'll tailgate. We'll oh, tailgate yeah. before trivia. K Fabe, bro. K Fabe, the Daddy sodas. Jesus. All right, guys. Dave, thank you. A pleasure as always. Great job again at Mission Pro. And that's a great always... question, man. Thanks, Dave. You got it, brother. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, the wonderful David LaGreca. Dave, uh, I'm, David I'm, LaGreca. No sign of the train, huh? Choo choo. No, wasn't he supposed to Dude, come my in? Internet, my internet is otherworldly bad tonight. I have no yeah. idea why. Some something doesn't like you out in the mean streets of West Orange. Maybe you got some coons out there chewing through your wiring, bro. I was waiting for uh, my boss to show up last night where we parked the truck, and I saw like three fucking raccoons come out of the woods. Those little motherfuckers are scary as shit, dude. We're getting like foxes and coyotes in like our neighborhood now, which has never happened before. Yeah, we we've had a few fox sightings around here too. It's really strange. 
really strange. So like, yeah, I, like, I mean, ra- ra- raccoons. We've had you know squirrels, obviously chipmunks. Dude, even deer. Like deer. Like ten years ago, you weren't seeing in our part of town because it's not a forested area. But now, because I mean, I'm not gonna get on a soapbox here, but because oh. all this development of land, all the animals are coming into more residential, you know, areas, and it's it's I've we've never seen deer like deer like a deer is like a big event. It's like go hey, everyone stop what you're doing go watch there's a deer over there. Kev, when you see them, you say oh dear. No, I say. Yeah, I say oh dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Couldn't think of anything. All right, I reached out. I reached out. I confirmed with the train before. I just reached out to him. He is now typing. We'll see what the status is. He's having problems with the Zoom. Uh, what he needs, we'll see. But, All uh, right, cool. What well, do you guys want to move on to while we're waiting? You want to talk uh, Macho three Man? Three minutes he'll be joining us. Three minutes. Okay, well then fuck the Macho Did Man. Did somebody say three minutes? I'll tell you what. That, that, he is my favorite podcast to listen to out of um, the whole Conrad family. Who? Eric Bischoff. I agree. I like them all for different reasons. I agree. To, I agree with that as well. I think sometimes Eric's shows are a little too long. Although Jim Ross is really fucking pushing it, like, like I see them covering like a topic, and then I see three and a half hours. I'm like, ah. It's you know what for someone that has to has to to like deal with something while working. They're perfect. They just make the day go. Like all of them are. Like even Arn. Like I got back into Arn because now I'm back to working more. So even like. Ask Arn anything every other week is awesome. Uh, yeah, the Ask Arn everything's cool. Arn likes to keep it to about an hour and a half, uh, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I like that Tony Schiavone's been on the 1986 for uh, Jim Crockett promotions. Oh, now Tony, is is Tony's podcast still watch-alongs? Because I can't do the watch-alongs. They're, they're watch-alongs, but you don't need to watch them. They watch the, um, the 605 episodes for every week. Okay. You know? Um... Yeah, so so like there's there's significant amounts where they play the audio, like they pretty much play all of the interviews and the matches on those six oh five shows are not long matches to begin with. Right, but so I mean those those, those shows those six oh five shows were two hour shows in among, in and amongst themselves though. Yeah, but I mean cut down with commercials and whatnot. They usually come in at about an hour twenty, an hour twenty five. So. Yeah. And plus, like they're they're like they're they're constantly saying what's going on, and then Tony does like you know like, hey, what do you think they're saying? And he pretends to do the interview as the as the character, and but they're pretty interesting because most of those shows are storylines, you know. Right. So it's like Magnum TA comes out, he'll cut a promo, or it's like, oh shit, here comes Ronnie Garvin, and and Conrad will be like, you think he's gonna say proud to be an American? And ten seconds in, I'm proud to be an American, and they start fucking laughing. Have you listened to Kurt Angles? Only bits and pieces of it on YouTube. I have not been through a full episode. Yeah, neither have I. But tomorrow, a new one drops. Jeff Jarrett's My World. I will 100... That will be the first thing I do when I get to work tomorrow. If it's yeah, available. That's, that's going to be a good one. I got I to gotta get on the Kurt Angle. Kev, here's, here's the problem I have now. There's just so many of them. I, it's a good problem to have, but you almost feel like you're disrespecting somebody if you don't listen to it. Well, like, that's the other thing too. Like sometimes the episodes come up and it's just like, like some of them were sitting there for three weeks and I'm just like, I got a shit can them. I'm never going to get to yeah. this. I'm just want to get rid of them. The, the only thing about Arns that I had to make like any little critique and people will probably disagree with me. It's, it's a lot of like late, like 2015, 2010, 2016 WWE stuff when he was like a producer which might, which many people might find interesting, and, and so do I, but I'd rather hear about like, you know, WCW from like, and he does those too. But it's recently it's been a lot of like, uh, you know, payback 2016 or, or 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 shows like that. Which I mean, I'll I'll listen to it when I when I get around to it, but I won't necessarily go out of my way to to listen to Arn Anderson talk about you know payback 2016. No, and, and that's a fair argument. I I wonder I wonder if maybe they could have ran something where since Tony Schiavone's covering Jim Crockett in 1986, they could have had something like a tandem with Arn. Maybe he maybe like he doesn't watch the shows, but you know, like Conrad goes in like, hey, you know, what was going on in 1986 at this time? Because he gets into that quite a bit with like his travels and coming back and doing TV and whatnot. Right. 
and, but a lot of see what they're and this is why Conrad's a freaking genius is that a lot of these these new shows are being saved for like the ad free shows where you actually have to pay for like the real like I mean his shows are great no matter what but if you want like the good goods you're gonna have to pay like if you you're gonna have to pay for a round table with Eric Bischoff Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross you're gonna have to pay for you know Jim Hurd uh, interview or uh, not Jim Hurd um Jim Crockett yeah yeah Jim yeah. Crockett R I P well, plus yeah, they also they Jim do a lot on there too. You know, Jim heard, but they also do a lot of different things. Like Conrad does, like his belt show on there. I think Chris Hero even has a show that he does on there now. So there's quite a bit going on with that. Genius. Uh, Ice Train has arrived. Choo choo. <laughs> I've never, I've never been more excited ever. I've never been more excited ever. Oh, look at this bad boy. Train, what's going on, brother? How you been? He's connecting. Here we go. He's connecting. He's connecting. That's right. He's getting in there. Be coming up any second now. Ice Train is with us. I love this. This is going to be awesome. He looks. Uh, Somebody else is there. Somebody's helping him out. Uh, look at those guns. He I is know. Good he Lord. Is <laughs> Mr. Train, how are you? Man, good. What's going on with you, Matt? What's happening? Not much. We appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, busy schedule to uh, to join us. And we were just talking. I don't know if you heard us. We we're just talking about your guns, uh, Tony over oh. here. Yeah, they, yeah, they still all right. Damn, They're still good. They still good. I see you on the on the Instagram. You got the uh, the the jack straps. Tony uses the jack straps for his DDP yoga. Yes, man. I would use some DDP jacks. DDP. P straps on Wednesday for my shoulders and also I'm doing them for my calves on Thursday so we're going um, those really help me maintain my strength they're really good and I recommend people start getting in line to order them now because they really work brother they really work I've, I've, been, I've been using the app for quite a few years now and Oh, man, what a surprise to see you and your sons doing the DDP yoga as well. What got you involved in the program? Was this, was this well, a Dallas? You know, Dallas, Dallas, been, Dallas and me been like brothers since I got to Georgia in 1991. Dallas and me been just always cool. You know, he's been with me for my first son, Harold Jr. He's been with me through my other three sons, Miles and Michael, but Bishop's on his way. Bishop is 10 years old. He's going for 50 straight legit push-ups at 10. 10 wow. years old. Wow. So he, his goal is to do, Bishop, the little baby, is the goal to do 50 straight push-ups at 10 years old. And, them, and they're going to be strict and legit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like you got your DDP shirt on tonight. Of course I do. Yeah. Man. I represent. Man, you are representing, man. That's man. I love that DDP yoga, those push ups. And but my boys, Miles and Michael, they love it. They love it. They they like they they love and you know, Dallas is like their uncle, but they love that DDP yoga, though. They really do. I've been I've been working on my push ups again. I got up to 35 last week straight. I could do okay. over 100 in a workout, but I'm pushing for that straight. There was a point in time where I I'm lucky if I can get five done. So 35 right now, I'm feeling good. It's probably not nearly what you can do with those guns of yours, man, but I'm working on it. I love the program. I love getting involved with it. And I love the straps. The straps are just- Man, amazing. don't, when you jack them up, they get tight. You feel that tension and you feel that good, good push in there, man. I love them. I, I can't wait to put them on tomorrow. I can't wait. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. I've never done my shoulders- with um those straps on, so it's gonna be the first time to jack them up and then actually go up and do some shoulder press like that. So it's gonna be, we'll see how they feel. I know they're gonna be burnt out on like eight reps. <laughs> and and this is incredible. Like I'm I'm smiling ear to ear right now because I'm such a big fan of yours. And you said 1991 is, is how long you've known Dallas Page, and that just reminds me, like how long you were in wcw you saw like everything probably right like every every generation of wcw from bishop like roots like 
how long how long were you actually there consistently were there times where you left and came back no, i was i was basically always on contract i think i was off contract maybe eight months from 90 from 91 to 2001 yeah. and it was just you know teddy long did a podcast a little while ago and he said man you know it wasn't they trained to get a push. They just didn't know what to do with him. He was young, and it was just, I was, you know, when I look at guys like Big E, I laugh, and, you know, they remind me of myself a little bit. So, you know, it's, it's good. And the opportunities, like I'm trying to get my son, Miles, wants to wrestle, and my little cousin, Samson Fletcher, wants to wrestle. Um, if you're into workouts, his dad is C.T. Fletcher. And um, if you're into motivational workouts, but his dad is real big into the workouts. And Samson, they both want to wrestle. So I've been working with Samson and Miles for about the last three weeks to get them up to their squats and stuff like that. Because my son, Miles, is him and Samson, two great athletes. And I mean, they're both strong and both aggressive. Good boys, but I was in WCW thirteen years. Oh, God, that's so. It's an incredible a, run. Good God, not, not many people could say they had a run like that. What was your most enjoyable point in those thirteen years? Um, when Dusty Rhodes, God rest his soul, and Paul Orndorff walked up to me and said, "You're ready." And that was basically when me and Canyon was doing our run, me and Chris Canyon. And when Dusty Rose came up to me and said, hey, you're ready. You, you, you got it. The light is on. And uh, me and Canyon had some great matches together. And after WCW closed, I just, I was like, you know, I saw some of my friends go to New York. And I just chose when um, um, Lauren Nitus called me, Johnny Ace. I was doing my yard work, and I was like, I think I'm good. And um, because the circumstances, I just – I was a great athlete, but it was certain guys. It was hard to work with me because at that time, I was really coming into my own in, in 2001. So it was going to be certain things that I required that I thought I should receive. And, and when I saw what Vince did with some of the WCW talent, I just decided I was good. I was good. I was good. And you but stayed I'll tell you, huh? I'm sorry. I said you stayed good until 2019, right? You had your one match. Oh, yeah. I went to Europe. And me and Dave Taylor worked over there. That was like, man, I'll tell you, we, I'll be honest with you. I think, I'll be honest, me and Dave really worked that crowd. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And I, and from that time, when I went over to Europe in 2019, before the COVID came, I had like 20 matches lined up. Uh -huh. um, WrestleMania weekend and, and, and stuff like that. I, you know, sometimes I want to be a manager, but I think even now at 55, my physique kind of will overwhelm some of my guys I'm managing. So I, you know, like I told Teddy, if you ever need a manager for one night, I'll do it. But um, maybe I go to AEW and do some management over there one day. Because Jericho apparently still got me in his mouth, so he still liked me a little bit. So Maybe I go over to AEW and become a manager. <laughs> what what about yeah. what about even possible what about even possibly being like like uh you know like a modern day like Big Bubba or like a Mr. Hughes type deal? Because like I mean you you said you were 55 and it completely blew me out of the water because <laughs> uh you, you still look like you could get get whatever you need to get accomplished, get accomplished. What about doing something like that? Um What's Big Bubba's and Mr. Hughes or what are they doing now? What are they doing? Oh, I don't know. 
I mean, well, I know what one of them's doing. Not a lot. Oh, I I would like. I love wrestling. I love the new generation, and I just I want to work with my son and my nephew. I think Samson and Miles, they're going to be phenomenal. Both of them are young, and they both up to five hundred squats, and they're doing it the old way, the old power plant way, working squats, working. Samson's benching over 500 pounds. Miles is about 480, squatting, and they're great athletes. Both of them can dunk. One is a boxer. I just want to give back, I, you know, like Bronson Steiner. I'm so proud of Bronson down there in um, NXT right now, working down there with Vince, because I got to work out with Bronson a little bit while he was in Georgia, and I'm just proud of Bronson. He's a good kid, man. My God. Bronson Steiner is my little buddy. He's a, yeah, he's a big boy. He's uh he's made a few appearances on the uh on the uh, DDP yoga uh yes, I, yeah. yes, yes, I turned him I turned I turned him on to it and he loves it, man. He he did well. Um he did well with it. You know what I was thinking? You mentioned you you were looking for your spot. Uh Texas. I'm thinking maybe you're Fritz von Erich and you got all these young guys, but every once in a while when the old man needs to come out of retirement, puts puts on the tights once again and kicks some ass. Hey, you know what? I you know, I I, I actually plan on I'm actually in my week one of training. I'm really trying to um drop about um get my body fat down to about 15%. And I want to make my biceps about two inches bigger. And I'm going to get myself in some of the best shape I've ever been. I'm only 268 right now. And and I'm still pretty, pretty, pretty strong. I mean, I can't do 700-pound bench no more, but I can do, you know, 225 for like 60 reps. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to actually shoot a video. That's for my birthday to do on my 56th birthday to do 225 pounds, 60 reps. And I'm going to do them with DDP straps on. Damn. Let me ask you. They they just piss me off. Those straps piss me off so much. (laughs) And it keeps me angry while I'm training. (laughs) Why do they piss you off? Man, they get so tight. And it's like doing one rep. It's like doing six. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. So that that is the part of it, man. And just like Dallas just turned 65. And I'm like, man, you're my hero at 65 years old, because I'm trying to look that good when I'm 65. Yeah, I'm 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 telling you, man, I've seen some of my brothers in World of Wrestling just fall off so much and everything. And oh, did we lose train? I think oh. I think it's signal. I Can think you hear me? Out a little bit of, yeah, we got you. We got you back. So I just, you know, I really believe in that DDP yoga. I believe in exercise. And just like I saw my buddy Mongo McMichael, and I just want to go see him and give him a hug because he was such man, Mongo was such a good guy on that TV, man. He didn't he just loved the athlete and he had played in the NFL. And you talking about a heart of gold, man. Mongo McMichael was a cool dude and still cool dude to this day. Absolutely. I think, I think he gets an unfair shake because a lot of people don't feel that the spot that he was given wasn't something that he quote unquote earned, but you know, like at least speaking from me, I think he fit the horseman perfectly. I don't think you could have found somebody to fit that position better at that time than Mongo like you said, everybody's always said such great things about him too. What a great guy he is. Well, put it like this T this, this is how I look at it. Who deserves a push in pro wrestling? Anybody who goes through that training, Mongo played in the NFL and he brought color in something different to the show. No, he shouldn't have been a horseman, but guess what? I can I can name a lot of second generation wrestlers who should have been where they should be. So I believe at that time, Eric was pretty smart. And I believe Mongo really did great at what he did. I do. 
I do. I do. I think, and he deserved. He think about that great here. How he would just go into just raw dog commentating on Monday. I'm not even talking about his wrestling. I'm just talking about his comment, his commentating on on Monday Night Nitro. You know, these two big bohemians should be in the NFL. He just brought a different color, and then you had Bobby the Brain to follow up with him, and you had Eric. So you had a lot of guys to cover him up. So. You know, everybody's, you know, think about it. I told somebody the other day, there's no person in this world that's had more haters than Jesus Christ, and he ain't done nothing to nobody but gave love. So haters are just a beautiful thing. You got to have them. They make you good. <laughs> they make you good. That's, that's, that's a fair point, man. That's a fair point. I, I always go back with, uh, with Mongo and, uh, there, there, there's a famous match. I forget what pay per view it was, but he had he had a match with uh, Bill Goldberg when they when they had their business early in Goldberg's run, and uh, I thought it was a hell of a match. You know, for Goldberg who hadn't worked too much to begin with, and Mongo who was a football player converted to a wrestler, they did a hell of a job, and they told a great story th- in that match. I, I thought that was a good match too. I I really did because it was just showing raw talent, and sometimes that's just what you got to do. Exactly. It's show raw talent. And it was out there slugging. It was real. Wasn't no wrestling technique going to be done besides a couple slams and maybe one or two fireman carries. And you got to remember what made Eddie Guerrero good. And I'm going to say this name if you don't mind. And what made Chris Benoit good, they can make everybody they work with look good. Brad Armstrong can make you look good. Yep. Fit Finley can make you look good. Pistol Pez Watley can make you look good. Those are the guys that make wrestling like it is. Not the superstar. The guy who's who can go out there and make you look fantastic. Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker. God bless him. Sarge can make you look good if he liked you. If Sarge didn't like you, you can have a rough night that night. And, you know, but that all came from Jody Hamilton. Jody Hamilton, man, was one of the greatest minds in pro wrestling ever. Senior, and then his son is pretty good too. You know, he his a hey, he can call a match. He can really help you out in the rain. I mean, Nick Patrick was a was a genius referee, and Pee Wee was too. It was a lot of great guys in WCW. Man, it was a. I'll tell you, WCW, it is what it is, but it was a great. It was like a family up there. You know, it really was. And um, it was cool to work up there. I had, I did it 13 years. I have no complaints. I, whatever I got out of that business, man, I loved it. I told somebody, I said, I'm still making money off of Ice Train. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, years later, what's going on, brother? You didn't walk out on the porch. I had to. I, my internet is so bad. I have no idea why it's going on. So I'm sorry if you can't hear me as well as maybe I got you. you. I hear you fine. Kevin, before your question, I just we talked about Mongo. Obviously, the news came out last week. He has LAS. Um, if you want to support Team Mongo76 is the website. Go over to teammongo76.com. You can buy a bracelet. There's a link where you could buy a t-shirt, and there's a GoFundMe too set up. So if you want to support the McMahon, uh, the McMichael family, excuse me, go over to teammongo76.com. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Go ahead, Kevin. You got a oh. question? All right. I, I got a million questions. I <laughs> Give to me, bro. All right. So uh, the one that we got a lot of is about just working with Scott Norton and what that experience was like. Cause that was like, that was like peak for me, like peak fandom ice train, you and Scott Norton together as fire and ice was just like in a, in a division of all tag team wrestling. That was so good at that point. You guys were right there. <sighs> Let me tell you. Oh, I think I was a little bit different then. I believe that I treated Norton bad because I didn't respect his knowledge that he had. And at that time, I didn't want to be a tag team partner. I just thought I was ready to be on my own but not understanding the concept of the business. 
me and Norton never even had an hour conversation. Wow. We were totally, totally different characters. Now, as I've gotten older, hey, I've said to many people, I apologize. I could have really helped fire and ice, and we could have stayed together alone. I don't think me and Norton understood how special we were because I believe we had a lot of people giving different views in our ear. I think when I look at it now, I'm like, man, they was giving the Steiner a butt whoopings. And, and there's no way that team should have broke up so early. But at that time, I don't think Norton wanted to tag with me, and I probably didn't want to tag with him. And you can, because I don't think he knew me as a person, and I don't think I knew him as a person. I believe tag teams got to have an equal yoke, and it has to be a real tag team. And when you grow together, and it's a difference when you're put together. It's no reason why me and Scott Norton shouldn't have went out there and beat the Steiners the first night on Nitro. Shouldn't even yeah. shouldn't even been any problem. Fire and ice. You ready for this one, Kevin? You can quote it. You ready? Fire and oh, ice. ready, baby. It's the strongest tag team ever in professional wrestling. Both of them. Two legit 600-pound bench pressers, two legit 800-pound squatters, and, and we can go out there and throw clotheslines with the best of them, okay? And Scott Norton and Harold Hope ice train could have been great, but at that time, it just wasn't meant to be. It just wasn't. And, and, it's, and, I, and I believe – go ahead, Kev. Oh, no, I'm just saying because I just remember like so vividly the moment when you guys actually split. It was an underrated moment in a big brawl of NWO versus WCW where all these guys were starting to turn all at once. And Scott Norton's like walking mm -hmm. right behind you. You're walking in. Scott Norton's right behind you in that blue shirt. <laughs> and, he, and he just, he mm -hmm. just decks you. Uh, was that always the plan? Also, was, mm -hmm. there ever, was there ever any plan for possibly maybe you joining the NWO? You know, the... I'll be honest with you. I liked Europe. To go to Europe, go to France, go to England. I love working for all the Vons. I believe that WCW, I was young. And I was, I was not even, I don't even think I was in my third, I was made by 32. And they just didn't know what to do with me. I'm telling you. Now, yeah. sometimes I could drop that ball. I remember one time I went and did some squats. I think I was squatting like 875 for 15 reps. And the next day I had a nitro match with um, a TV match with Regal. Man, my legs were so sore. They was talking about how out of shape I was. No, my legs, I couldn't move. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, they only going to give me like a two-minute match. I'm going to beat somebody. And next thing I know, Kevin Sutherland was like, hey, let's do a 10-minute TV draw. What? I can barely walk. <laughs> and, and, and that would be the stuff that I would do. But I believe Fire and Ice should have got pushed. And they just wanted, I don't know if Norton didn't want to tag with me, but I know Fire and Ice could have did a whole lot better than what they did. And that's just it. And maybe because we never sat down and talked, we never chopped it up. But since over the end, man, I, I love Norton. Um, it will always be a memory in my heart that couple months together. And it was just always fun. And I tell Norton all the time, I say, now I beat you three times. The referee stopped the match on me, but I got you three times. We just <laughs> laugh about that. But we're, we're, hey, fire and ice, man, one day, hey, Norton got his knee surgery, get in shape, we could do something, you know. But uh, that was a great time for me in my life. You ever, uh, you ever fuck around and challenge uh, Norton to an arm wrestling match? No, not then, but I was pretty good. I, I was, I was a good arm wrestler, and um, no, we never challenged each other in the arm wrestling contest. No, not at all. You were in the, you were in WCW, uh, as far as I can remember, longer than Scott Norton. Was there any chance of possibly you being the guy that joined the NWO? Why was it Scott Norton over over you? Or, you know, if there's anything to that at all? Because they just wanted me to stay the baby face. Okay. They, 
They didn't know my evil personality. That's why Canyon and me was so good together because I can get to show who I was. I'm sorry. I'm one bipolar. If I don't like you, it could be hell to catch a cab. But if I like you, I can work with you. And a lot of people just kind of thought I was a cheesy. No, that wasn't me at all. They just thought I was a nice guy. And, and, and a lot of guys didn't want to get hurt. They thought I would hurt them. And man, Finley, you know, the NWO was something I wanted to join, but no, the offer was never there. Never, never, never. The, it was like, basically, I made a lot of money to sit at home and I wasted a lot of time. Honestly, I should have went to Vince a long time ago when I was, after my first run to let be get developed. I wasted a lot. I mean, you got to think about it. I was benching over 700, squatting over 1,000. WCW never did a video of that. They still was talking about Bill Kazmaier. <laughs> <laughs> They couldn't. So, they couldn't find a. They couldn't find a world for you to carry out onto the the ring. Yes. It, yes. So, so that you know, I would have loved to join the NWO, but I was glad that um, Stevie Ray had joined, and that made me laugh. I love when Stevie Ray joined. I enjoyed the little fun with um, Ernest and Cat Miller. You know, it was just hey, I thought that, you know, I had another ten years with WCW. I never thought the company was gonna close. Yeah. We're uh, we're talking with Ice Train, uh, Ice underscore Train underscore on Instagram. Uh, make sure you're giving him a follow. He's as you can see in the video, he's still jacked as a mother. Uh, he's still crushing it. He's got his kids doing workouts. He's doing workouts. He's got the jack strapped. He's crushing it. Um, you talked about staying at home, doing nothing, uh, and getting paid in WCW. Uh, I didn't even realize uh, you were still in WCW at the end. How did the transition come from Ice Train to M.I. Smooth? You know, Eric Bischoff, M.I. Smooth, Eric said, you could talk. So we're going to let you talk. So, hello, Boo Boo Bear. I told him about your push-up challenge. I was talking to my 10-year-old. Um, Eric Bischoff came up to me and said, hey, I started doing vignettes with Ric Flair, um, uh, what was it? Um, what's the guy? That, um, what's my man name? Um, the chosen one, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, yeah. Jarrett, um, Shane Douglas. I was doing all kinds of vignettes when I would be like, hey, you could do anything you want to do. I was just a positive motivator. And then when I guess somebody got upset with Eric, the next thing you know, I was in the ring wrestling. I was supposed to not even wrestle for a whole year. I was just supposed to be a... A, a, a crap starter in the back of the locker room. You know, like me in a match with Norman Smiley, which is hilarious. You know, I just, I got to um, enjoy that match. But I'll tell you, man, WCW had a lot on their plate. They had a lot of talent. And they had guys out there who, had, I mean, they had guys in the power plant who were awesome just sitting up there resting. And they just had a lot of guys on the payroll. You know, they had an A division, a B division, a C division, a D division. Kevin, so that that's what made WCW where they were. But, man, yes, I was there. Am I Smooth was supposed to be never in the rain, just a limo driver getting people in trouble. And Vince Russo was like, man, I need him on TV and – Vince Russo let me beat up Buff Bagwell one day in the locker room. And next week I was in there um, doing the Young Dragons. It was just never, they could never stick with a plan too long. <laughs> yeah, it's never. Great. You talk about all the talent that was in WCW, not just at the end, but your whole run. And it's, it's remarkable that they couldn't figure out what to do with you or stick to the plan. I, I do want to let you know the first pay-per-view I ever ordered WCW pay-per-view Halloween Havoc 93, that first match, I have this weird like love for you and Charlie Norris. And I don't know why I love you guys. I cannot that six man tag match. And with all due respect to uncle Fred, I love uncle Fred, but it was like 
Ice Train. He has this young baby face. He's giant. I'm like, love him. Charlie Norris, he's pretty wild. I'm into that. And then you guys against Harlem Heat when they were Kane and Cole, they weren't even Booker T and Stevie. Yeah. And Equalizer. Equalizer was a little squirrely. But I'll always remember that. That's the first WCW pay-per-view I ever <laughs> ordered. And I was like 12 years old. And you were the first guy I saw. And I was like, I love Ice Train. Uh, and I'm on Kevin's side. Fire. Man, I'll, pre- I'll, pre- I'll, I'll love fire. Hey, that, that Charlie Norris. I'll tell you some stories about Fred and um, Booker T. <laughs> and Booker T, Booker T used to get so mad at Fred because when he was splashing, he would not drop the splash. And Booker T was like, if he splashed me one more time, I'm going to fight him tonight. I'm like, I don't think he's trying to do it, Booker. He's, man, Booker <laughs> would be in the middle of the ring sitting there, and they say, you know, Fred would come down almost 450, and Booker would be like, oh, and, man, and you know, to make Booker T upset, it take a lot, because Booker pretty laid too. But, man, Booker T hated We were in that. We were doing a run. Uh, we were going through Nashville, and we were working those little house shows every weekend. And, man, every night Booker T would end up with um, Fred at the end of the night. Man, that was a rough <laughs> night for Booker. But Booker handled it like a man, though. He was straight business, and that's why he became a great champion. Booker always did good business. Yeah, and 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 Uncle Fred was a was a, a big uh, a big four fifty. He wasn't he wasn't a small four fifty. He was a big four fifty. Man, hey, I remember one time we were um, I was at Ric Flair. Ric Flair had me come to his gym in Charlotte. He said, "Train when you get to Charlotte, I'm gonna set you up." He got me my hotel room. I think I I think I went in there. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. I think I think I went in there and me and Fred was working out. I think I did like five or five for like fifteen reps. We were just laughing. He's like, "Did you just do that fifteen reps?" I said, "I thought I got 14. He said, "No, it was 15. Fred was pretty strong too. Oh my god, Tugboat was a strong dude too, man. Fred was strong. Fred. Strong and just thick. Oh my God, he was so thick. <laughs> How close were you ever? I know you said that you could have or you should have maybe reached out to Vince McMahon at some point, or even afterwards, you said you were good. How close? Because like, I feel like you would fit in like gangbusters in WWE at any point in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, in this decade. How close was that ever actually to happening? Uh, 2002, but what it was, I had my son, Miles, and I actually wanted to raise my son. And I chose, and I would get calls in 05, 06, and I, I just wanted to raise my kids, to be honest with you. And I mean, and I wanted to be a dad because with Harold Jr., I was on the road so much, Germany for six months, Japan, Austria, Paris. I was never, I didn't even know where my dishes were in the house when I got home. Didn't even know where the fork was. So when that when WCW closed, I had my son Miles and and is and I hung out with my wife and I raised my kids. That's what I did. Now was it nice on Monday night I wanted to be on that TV? Most definitely. But now I can see where my sacrifice were Miles and Michael and Bishop and Harold and all my kids. Yuri, got seven of them now. Got seven. And um, I can see where the sacrifices came out to be. They're good. I think- yeah, if you watch that, uh, if you watch that Piper documentary, that was the one thing he said. He wished he could have, he wished he could have raised his, his kids. So I think that's a very, uh, very humbling thing for you. And I'm glad that you did that. I'm sorry, Tony, I cut you off. You had a question. Um, I, I know you mentioned traveling to Germany. We mentioned a uh, CWA earlier working for Otto Vons. Uh, what was that like for you compared to working for WCW? I mean, I know it's overseas. I know you get to travel to different countries, uh, working in that territory, but, uh, what was that experience like a lot different than WCW? Otto, Go ahead. Otto was a big, Otto was a big man. So he knew how to push me. Nice. And the night I won the Bremen cup, 
it was me and JBL for the finals. Wow. And I beat the hell out of JBL. <laughs> and um, JBL was over there. And when I tell you he was screaming like a baby, you can call him tomorrow. I laid, because I, I, I over in Europe, I could be myself. I didn't have, it was like, basically, other than Finley and Rambo, I was it. So I can do what I wanted to do. If I wanted to get out there and work stiff and solid, I could do it. And um, it was two Americans for the cup. And I was the only black baby face to ever win that Bremen Cup. And that was one of the most proud. And John, bless his heart, he took that beat. Because, man, I beat I beat the brakes off of JBL. I tell you, it was rough for him that night. <laughs> and I mean, and so when I look at JBL on TV, when he was in WCW, him and Ron Simmons in WWE, I was like, what? JBL got the whole locker room terrified? Not in Germany. I watched Finley <laughs> wrestle JBL. I watched Finley watch JBL one night and Finley wrestle JBL over in Hanover. And it looked like a baby against a grown person. It was that good. Do you, did you have a, a lot of merchandise in WCW? Did you have, I mean, I know it, it's, it's almost like I a had crime. T-shirts. I, had, I had some t-shirts. I had some trains, and I had a dial, too. I had a dial. Did you? Yeah, I had a dial, Kevin. It was it was pretty cool-looking dial. Man, I don't know where that thing is, but I had some dials. I had some good merchandise. In Europe, I had good merchandise, too. I did. Okay. But I, it's, some, it's some hidden merchandise out there on the, on the black market, but it's funny when I see it. But WCW... Yeah, Kevin, WCW, man, they took care of me. I'll be honest with you. Eric Bischoff, that dude always looked out for me. When it came to my money, he never played with me. Eric took care of me. And Stone Cold Austin, Stone Cold told me one day when he wasn't Stone Cold, he was a Hollywood blind, he would harass me. He would say, overpay, underwork. And I'd be so pissed at Stone Cold. Oh, my God. <laughs> he would tease me. Him and Brian Pillman would tease me all the time. And I really didn't know what they were saying, but hey, you, if you're not the booker and you're not ready to do those one, two, threes, and it's just business at the end of the day, Kevin. It's just business. That's so it is. Cool. And um, and I love, and I tell people, I told my son, pro wrestling is the greatest business in the world. It was good to me, and it still is to this day. I love it. When I I just saw Mark Merrill the other day. Look fantastic. 60 years old, look fantastic. That's a guy who walked away from wrestling because of his spiritualness, his his God. And he was like, hey, I'm good with this. And, and Mark walked away. He's doing fantastic. He looks great. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I saw that that you and Mark and Dallas have formed uh, quite the little group uh, down there in Georgia. Seems like you know they, they do the they do the they do the DDP yoga. I do the DDP straps. I I can't do the yoga class. I can go over Dallas. He got a nice sauna where it draws from the inside and out. I go sit in the sauna. It's good. <laughs> but I might my sons are into the DDP, especially Michael, my one who runs track. He loves DDP yoga. Loves it. But hey. Excuse me. They get serious about that yoga, that DDP yoga in, the, in that basement. They get they get too serious for me. I'm be like, bro, I want to go to the weight room. I don't feel like I don't feel like holding my elbows out for eight hours. Uh, you want to do any diamond cutters? <laughs> yep, boom, diamond cutters, and at the end of it, bam, you know, Hulk I love it. it. I love it. Yes, hulk it up. Oh my goodness. Yes, man, Dallas is. But, you know, his little motivation stuff right now I really like because he's really just a positive guy. He really is. DDP is what he is. He is really positive. He doesn't do any negativity. He's just positive, man. And um, that's just Dallas, just positive. He's, he's real, authentic. With that, him being positive, it's real and authentic. It really is. You have uh, really you is. You have any inklings to do the uh, the DDP retreat coming up this summer? I was thinking about 
um, actually surprising him and going over there. So it's on it's on my list because he would never expect me to go on a retreat. That'd never. Because it's just hard. It's Tony, it's hard. It's hard to get me for a party, you know. So <laughs> because if I'm so hey, it, it is Kevin, it's hard. So I really I might surprise him this summer and um, talk to the miss about going over there and um, hanging out with him a little bit. That'd be awesome. It really be. But I don't know if I'm going to be at the retreat every day doing DDP yoga. I might be doing margaritas and I might get that kicked out of the, I might be on a real vacation. I might be My doing guy. margaritas. And stuff. Yeah. So they'd be like, Hey, what about, Hey brother, I had too many beers last night. So. You know, so I'm I'm really thinking about it. I don't know. I might do two days of DDP yoga out of the whole retreat. Now that I can guarantee you, it won't be three; it'd be two. I'm done after two days. Doing something. I, I'm man. on a vac. If I'm on a vacation, if I'm on a vacation, Tony, it's gonna be a vacation. <laughs> yeah, it, it ain't gonna be yoga for five days. Not happening. No, I don't. Not at all. Dude. I don't blame no, you. From no, what I saw, the resort no. looks pretty nice too, man. You got to get some vacation time in on that one, hundred percent. Yes, exactly. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking about. It. I saw it. I was like, man, he'll never think I'd show up on that. So I'm th I'm really ninety percent there. I just got to share it with somebody else, and we'll put it together. Very do. Nice. So let me ask you, Train. You did. You wrestled all over the world. You did the CWA, WCW. You wrestled. Everybody, who was your favorite person to get in the ring with and just just go with? Fit Finley and PN News. PN News. Yeah, News. That's a surprising I answer. I love that. Me. Yeah, me, me, and Grizzly used to have some. It would be like Vader and Cactus Jack in Europe. Yes, it was good. And I just think Paul got a bad rep. Um, now he needed to change his body a little bit, but. As far as a worker, Paul would work with you really good. And Fit Finley and my favorite tag team partner would be the great Tony St. Clair. Probably the best wrestler in the whole world. Did uh the PN ever write a rap for you? PN News couldn't rap. PM News can sing, he could sing. PN News can do um Yo, baby, yo, baby, all my yo. Leonard Skinner. He could do all my, I'm a Leonard Skinner, man. He could do all my Leonard Skinner stuff, okay? But he couldn't rap to save his life. PN News is, PN News got as much so, <laughs> PN News got as much so as, um, PN News got no soul. He, he a country boy from Nebraska. They, they, now he, no. He could do Simple Man for me. He could sing that. He could do Curtis Lowe, but PN News cannot rap. Done. Not happen. <laughs> that's got to be the that's that's got to be one of the worst. <sighs> like Mark Merrill pulled off Johnny B. Bad. Okay. Mark pulled that off. Oh, yeah. But PN News as a rap master, all he could say is yo baby, yo baby, yo. That's it. Why? Was it no, no? So, so, so no. why did that, why he, why was so why was that a thing then? I don't. That's so confusing. You know what? It was it was dusty. Like hey, basically, we ain't gonna sell you as no tough guy because you, you don't look tough, but, but you can work a little bit. So let's make you a rapper like one of the fat boys. That was it. That was it. You put it that, that way, that it. makes a lot of sense. Uh, made him, made, made him. a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. So D Dusty, that's just the genius of Dusty Rose. You know, Dusty was like, you ain't about to scare nobody. You ain't no technical wrestler, but I like you, and I'm going to give you a job. So you know what? Rap is in right now. You want to be a rapper? All right, put on these green and blue tights and go out here and Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. And you got to hang out with salt and pepper. <laughs> I mean, he got to hang out with salt and pepper. You that were was it. That was it. You were given the, the ice train name. Was there any other names on the table for you? You know what? That I botched that name. 
because I don't know why I came up with that name. Just let me do what I wanted. That was WCW. You want to call yourself <laughs> Ice Train? Call yourself Ice Train. I have no idea. And um, I was like, it's a train. I'm fast. I'm quick. But it, I should have called myself something like Buck or, or Hogue. Just my last name. But the thing about it, just saying choo-choo to those little kids used to make their day. Yeah. So, yes, man, that right there, those little kids in CNN Center and Center Stage would eat that up. Yeah. Yeah, so I made a lot of kids love. Fred Savage was one of my fans of the Wonder Years. That's awesome. Yeah, and those, and as far as me, I hated the name Ice Train, but the kids, man, they love to choo-choo. Oh, my God. I can get a choo-choo out of any kid. It was beautiful. And I the name I didn't like, but it's still doing some good things for me to this day. You know, just that little smile and that little smile on that big teddy bear, which they thought I was. So it, it helped me out, really did. And I, I'm glad I never changed my name. And I liked Am I Smooth because that character was fun a gossiper, a shit starter, and I like that guy. Now, that was my favorite character, Am I Smooth? I could do that all day long. I can go to Vince right now. You let me be Am I Smooth, I have your whole locker room fighting. Yes. Now, that's what I would do if I went to Vince. I would be Am I Smooth, Tony, again. That would be perfect. Was there any, this is actually just a question just came to my head. Was there any worry that people because you had been in wcw for so long that people would recognize you as ice train this whole time was it ever brought up on camera or was there any or were you just all like clean slate all new this is my guy now no people still knew i was ice train just a better version there you go <laughs> when i was at my school they still would choo choo in the middle of the um middle of the backyard i knew Kevin, I knew when me and Bobby Walker, we were in Oklahoma wrestling. And you can pull the match up and listen to the crowd. And when I left that arena that night, and I told Bobby, we were driving. <laughs> I said, Bobby, if we don't get a push after this, you'll never get one. Because we stole the show in Oklahoma. It was a TV match. It was me and Bobby Walker. And um, we were like best friends. It was just, we were like, we're going to wrestle? We're not tagging? We're going to wrestle against each other? So we flipped a coin of who was going to go over because we was that close. And um, I said, all right, I'm going to go over. If we do it again, you go over. They they didn't think. We went out there and we really stole the show. And um, Bobby Walker was a great athlete. He was just misunderstood too. Just a great athlete. Strong. Just certain guys had, they just couldn't do them with. And we had we had Teddy Long on not too long ago, and he he credits Bobby Walker as being one of the best guys that he managed that never really got a break. Um, and I, I feel like that's the same way. And, and Teddy Long, what, what was your take on, on being paired with Teddy Long and a lot of these guys? Like I believe it was like you, uh, Bobby Walker, Jim Powers, uh, all all paired with Teddy Long. What did that do for you guys as characters? Well, I had the highest winning percentage for anybody who ever tagged with Teddy Long. Uh, my winning percentage with Teddy was like 20. I might have lost five matches with Teddy out of 50. Um, and I, Teddy, I didn't think I needed a manager. I didn't. Um, I thought they gave me the Teddy and didn't build me and Teddy. Just one day I woke up, I was with Teddy Long. That's what WCW would do. You know, they never gave me and Teddy no vignettes, him coming down to the power plant like, man, I'm about to steal this guy. They just put us together. That's what WCW do. They never did a meet with me and Teddy signing together. They had no vision for some of the young talent. Like Jim Powers was a good piece of talent. They had no vision for Jim Powers. 
you know, just put them out there with Teddy. Put Bobby out there with Teddy. Put me out there with Teddy. Put Craig Pittman out there with Teddy. No yeah. vision behind what you're doing. Just putting guys together. And think about the wrestling fan, the real wrestling fan. They're not stupid, Kevin. They know bull crap when they see it. So with Vince, Teddy had a whole different role. Referees, general manager, Vince got the full application out of Teddy. Craig Pittman, great talent. He ain't do nothing with him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. You figure you figure putting a, a talent like yourself with a great mouthpiece like Teddy Long, like th that's mm -hmm. money just waiting to be made. But like you said, if you don't put a story, you don't put a background, you don't put a reason behind anything and a goal, it, ju it just doesn't mean anything. It's just flat. It's just there. And that's unfortunate, especially with <laughs> you and Teddy being together. Me and Teddy was together over a year. And we just kept ourselves alive because we were me and Teddy. But nobody went back and I hear about all these All-Americans. Shannon Sharp is a Hall of Famer who's on my All-American team in college. <laughs> you know, I got Hall of Famers on my All-American team. Um, I was a three-time All-American. I played against, I taught one of the greatest offensive tackles in football how to play football, Eric Williams of the Dallas Cowboys. You know, so there was a football pedigree. I was a great athlete, could dunk a basketball. WCW just didn't care. Because if they didn't choose you, you got to remember, let me tell you how I got in pro wrestling. You ready? DDP says to me, come to a Christmas party. I want you to meet Eric Bischoff. I meet Eric Bischoff. He introduces himself. He says, you know why I like you? You're not like most wrestlers. I went from making zero dollars to over a quarter million dollars after that meeting. Was I ready for wrestling? No. I was ready. I should have been doing independence and doing shows to develop my talent. Tony, my first year of WCW, I had a torn ACL. So there was no jumping. There was no drop kicks. So when I came back and people saw leapfrogs and this, they were like, whoa, where did this come from? Because I had a torn ACL. Because they pulled me right out the power plant, stuck me with Ron Simmons, turned us on each other. Now, that was a team that could have been great. Oh, my God. They didn't. They killed wow. that little thing after one show. Yeah. Wow. Kevin's like, Ron Simmons? Yes, Kevin. I was with Ron Simmons. <laughs> no, I, listen, I've, I've followed your career a long time. I, I just, this is, this is, I mean, I, I assume I saw you team at some point, but this is just kind of wild to me that that, that, that that actually happened. Yes, we were tag teaming and we did one match against the Nasty Boys and they broke us up. It was just like that, one was, match. Student uh, against. Uh, it was on Saturday night. Yep, against the Nasty Boys. Wow. Yep. Well, that's what you caught, and then you caught your first loss in the singles match against Ron Simmons at Clash of the Champions, January 1994. No, I actually hit my head and knocked myself out. <laughs> that's true. I had a concussion the whole match. I suplexed Ron into the ring. And that's when I got a concussion. I don't remember the match at all. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I was like, he was like, I couldn't remember anything. I was knocked out, straight concussion. Jesus. Yep, finished the whole <laughs> match. Don't I don't remember anything. Wow. Yep, but you know, Ron, Ron told me what they were going to do. He said, listen, you're here. They're going to fire me and they're going to keep you and that's how it's going to be. I was like, what? He said, yeah, we're not going to be together long. And they fired him, and they sent me to Europe. That's how it went. Wow. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Uh, Ice Train at 
ice underscore train underscore on the Instagram. You have been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we'd love to have you come back on anytime uh, you want to join hey, us. I want to say sure. thank you guys, all three of you. I love the way you sweat. I love the uh, wrestling stuff in the background. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Kevin, I love you being on the porch. Hey, <laughs> anybody want to check me out on Ice Train Instagram? Come on, follow me. Um, any workout tips, just send me a little message and I'll send you a little program. That's how I do it. I love whatever way I can give back to. I love pro wrestling fans. We are, they are the most, you got to remember, I was a fan. I remember, I'm going to tell you a story before you go. Roddy, Roddy Piper. I was in college. Roddy, Roddy Piper. Um, I worked out with him in college. We were at Gold's Gym. Mammysburg, Dayton, Ohio, working out for three hours. Me and Roddy Piper. That was the greatest workout I ever had in my life. And he gave me tickets to the show that night. And I was in college. Man, you talking about a thrill? That was a thrill. And I was like, man, that's my... He was like, you. we worked out three hours. And um, Snooker was in there. And that's how I love pro... I always love wrestling. I grew up with Ernie Ladd, Bulldog, Don Kent. Detroit wrestling, that was it, man. The, the Sheik, we had the original Sheik in Detroit. He'll yep. throw the, yep. that was it, man. <laughs> hey, good night, my brothers. Thank you guys so much. Kevin, thank you. Tony, hey, everybody, thank you, all the fans. God bless you. Good night. Ice Love Train, you, Ice thank, train. You. thank you. Follow Ice thank Train you. at Ice underscore Train underscore Train. I'm going to hit you up. I want us to, we're going to send you a t shirt, a Shining Wizards t shirt. Send me a t shirt. You got it. Send me the T-shirt. I want to say thank you, guys. And whenever you in Georgia, we got to go hit a DDP yoga class. 100%. 100% down with that. Okay. You get to Georgia. You get to Georgia. Give a two-week notice. So we got to go. I'll go to DDP yoga with you guys. So That's if awesome. you come to Georgia, we're going to do something. Okay? That's All awesome. I need is a two-week notice. You got it, Trey. we go hit some DDP yoga. All right, bless you guys. Nice right, train. Thank you so much. Good Enjoy night. the rest of the night. We'll talk to you soon. Stay well, train. Thank you. you. Got it, Matt. Bye bye. Ice train. Oh, man. That was unbelievable. What a, guy. what a hell of an interview. Be sure to follow him again on the Instagram at ice underscore train underscore. Uh, he's crushing the DDP yoga. He's crushing the jack straps. He's looking diesel. Uh, he's he's still well, hanging he's out still, with us. He's still hanging. Loves, he's still loves hanging the shiny wizards. I got to tell you, you, know, you get a chance to see the video of him putting those straps on them big arms of his. Good God. It looks like those straps ain't going to be, ain't going to last too long. Good uh, Lord. He's a big man. Just, uh, just, just, I'm just going to put this out there now. All right. Oh, Mongo McMichael has, uh, ALS, not LAS. I'm a fucktard. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Oh, Tony noticed and ice train definitely made a fucking face when I said it. <laughs> And then I fucking clicked on the Facebook and Tony was busting my balls. And I'm like, fuck, my dyslexia kicked in. So, Kev, honestly, I didn't think Matt was going to go that way. I thought Matt was going to do top five. Oh, nope. no. I just wanted to correct uh, because I'm sure there's somebody who's going to listen to this and be like, this fucking guy is such an idiot. <laughs> you are. And just to be fair, you are right. I am a fucking idiot. But oh, well, it's, I it's do part of it's correct myself. It's part I didn't call you an idiot. I just put LAS. I, I got a kick out of it. It's a, it's actually an airport in California. He sure. looks he looks the fucking same. Dude, he Unbelievable. looks younger. Unbelievable. He's drinking out of that uh, Ricky Steamboat fountain of youth, for God's sakes. God bless yeah, the ice it. train. Ice train. What a, phenomenal. What a, what, a, what a guest. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, put well, that David like Breck in the shame. Yeah, Dave LaGreca, Ice Train for the first half. Let's uh, take a quick uh, little break ski. We got to talk some NWA. We'll talk some Impact, some uh, some MLW, some Ring of Honor, some WWE news. Somebody uh, somebody made their big return to Raw tonight. Ooh, teaser? I mean, it's out there. People know it. It's, it's, well, uh, it's, maybe, uh, they're, maybe they're listening to us. They don't know yet. Oh, hold it for after the break. Come on. Daniel Bryan. Right. Oh. What uh? What do we always say? Back after this. My internet sucks. <laughs> 
We know you love shopping at Amazon, and we also know you love listening to The Shining Wizards. That's why you're hearing this commercial right now. But were you aware that you could combine the two, do all your shopping, and support the show at the same time? Well, of course you can. Instead of going to Amazon.com, go to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com and make your purchases the way you normally would. You're going to get the same great low prices, and a portion of whatever you purchase is going to go to support The Shining Wizards. How great is that? You, by purchasing anything that you normally would anyway, Way is going to support us. That's a win-win in my book. So from now on, when you shop at Amazon, go to amazon.shiningwizards.com or click the banner on our website and do all of your shopping with the Shining Wizards. Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. Horns up, everyone. When on the Shining Wizards Network, be sure every Friday to check out Radioactive Metal. Radioactive Metal is one of the longest running podcasts on the interweb. And every week we bring you a fist full of metal, including interviews with all your favorite artists, discuss all the metal news, and feature the best tunes on the air today. So grab a Lemmy, join your cool Uncle Snowy and co-host Aaron in the pit. Your recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment broadcasting from the current to the way back. Join the impact player, Phil Rea, and the Portuguese Man of War Choppy for the Turnbuckle Throwbacks Wrestling Podcast. Live every week on RantEMRadio.com. Get all our episodes over at iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Audio Boom, Google Play, ShiningWizardsNetwork.com, and TurnbuckleThrowbacks.com. Are you tired of being told what to think and believe by Hollywood elites and politicians who just don't care about you? Tired of not getting the truth when you watch the news? Tired of trying to figure out what pronoun to use? Tired of mob mentality when all you want to do is think for yourself and make up your own mind? That's where we come in. This is Justin. And Vince. Your hosts of Inconclusive Breakdown. We are a weekly anti-PC podcast bringing you entertainment and current event news without any spin. If you want to truly stay informed on what's going on in the world, then give us a listen every Sunday, anywhere you get podcasts, at least till Zuckerberg and Twitter Jack deplatform us. And as always, we're proud members of the Shining Wizards Network. Tired of the PC police telling you what you can and cannot say? Want a show that travels back to the 80s and 90s where the badass hosts have beaten down cancel culture on three separate occasions and carried on to gloat about it? Since 2013, The Midnight Jury is that show. Travel back to the malls and arcades, pop in your VHS, and join us where the 80s and 90s return from the dead. Conan, tell them where to find us. WLWstudios.com, home of the Midnight Jury podcast, hosted by Midnight Mike and Calvin Brody. Also available on all major podcast platforms via the Shining Wizards Network. And join in the conversation on Twitter at Midnight Jury. What's up, wrestling fans? You want something awesome? Check out Wrestling Night in Canada here on the Shining Wizards Network, where three Canadian metalheads uniting for the love of pro wrestling. Every episode, we go over all the latest news and special events with the odd, unique interview as well. So grab a cold one and check out Wrestling Night in Canada, eh? Are you tired of being uninformed? Together, we can change all of that. Experience a podcast like you've never heard before. You'll gain knowledge, have some laughs, because we believe this is the last AEW podcast you'll ever need. Join us every Wednesday night at 10.15 p.m. on RantEMRadio.com and Facebook Live. We can also be found on all major podcast forums as part of the Shining Wizards Network. 
So stop listening to inferior AEW podcasts and bring a new podcast into your life by joining us. Join the Mark Order Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Mark Order Pod and on Facebook.com slash Mark Order Pod. Don't forget to tag us on social media and use hashtag join the Mark Order because if you don't find us, we will find you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Thomas, and what's your name? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah brother, that. mother, same mother and father. Your room was... Oh, we shared a room. Shared a room. We shared a room. thought I knew your face. Yeah, we so go maybe. way back, mate. Yeah. yeah. We should do a podcast then. Uh, we have. We do, we do a podcast. We do a podcast. What's it called? The... Roadcast. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah, no, yeah, well... What do we do? Well, we cover all different things in the world of pop culture. We're talking about comic books, we're talking about professional wrestling, and we're talking about movies. Go back and watch classic retro wrestling events, the likes of WWE, WCW, and if you do like that, you can check us out on Apple iTunes, also on Podbean, Anchor, and on Podknife. Also check us out on Twitter, at The Broadcast. That's B R O. K-A-S-T. Hey, the ending. Yeah, it's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Instagram also at the Broadcast Podcast. Remember, we don't spell it with a C. We spell it with a K. So, you, mate. Take it easy. With a K, okay. Fucking hell. Broadcast. All right, we're back. And let's blow through this really fast just because we have so much more we need to cover tonight. Uh we want to thank those that support us over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash wizards podcast. If you enjoy what you're listening to, please check out the shining wizards, Patreon uh, for as little as $1 a month. You can support the show. The $3 tier is your best bang for your buck. We just recorded Friday night a profile piece on Bra- uh, bad news. Brown. We did something brand new uh, where I read the crossword puzzle from inside the ropes to Kevin and Tony, and they filled in the puzzle. Uh, it was actually brilliant and so much fun to listen to. Yeah. That may uh, be the most fun thing we've ever done, by the way. <laughs> so and then Tony did a watch along to a match from ECW Cyber Slam 96. Uh, it's all on our Patreon, $3 tier plus. We will be doing a profile piece on the Fall Brawl 1995 for the month of May. So when you sign up for Patreon, you get access to all the bonus shows. uh, And it's only $3 a month. And we will mention you every week on a show uh, with the likes of Ice Train, Dave LaGreca. um, Shit. Next week, we got uh, Perch, the referee. We got uh, Mike Spear, comic book writer. Uh, joining us, and then the week after that, Casey Catal and Jax Dane from the NWA will be on the show. So we got big things on the horizon. I just got a message in the middle of the show. I'll tell you guys about that later, about a possible guest for the future. So that's a good thing. Uh, but at this time, thank those that support us over at the Shining Wizards Patreon. Uh, Brendan Henley. Heaney. Oh. Carrie Cowling. The Bergman, the LeBron James of Mattel figure, uh, Mattel Elite figure collecting. Matthew Birch, Henry David. Shout out Henry. to Carrie Cowling for that. Cool. Owen Hart micro brawler. David Henry Sorry. Bauer III, his pal Antonio Horseman makes experimental music at harvestmanrecords.bandcamp.com. Michael Hammond, Thomas Copps, the Mott Spock, Jay Copp, the big copper pump, Kenny Hawsey, the Scotch Drinkmore, Mark Parloni. Happy birthday, Mark. Christine Friesendorf, Maddie Mellinger. Matt Garifo, no relationship to the KJG. Catherine Hen- Hensler over at ondeckic.com. Brett Simonello. Yeah, here. What do you say? Ryan Schlong. Hey, Sean boy. Calejo. Sean Toe. Mr. Ryan Arthur over at elementary.com, our local brewery. And you heard Dave mention earlier, that's where we had our uh, eight year anniversary show. Uh, Anthony Rusinello, Danny Rusinello, the AOP of the SWP, Manny Carrazzo, the King of the Shining Wizards, Kathy Hummer, the Queen of the Shining Wizards, and last but not least, Mr. William Mercier Jr. Lives are going to be in William Mercier's hands, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And uh, before we get into uh, some business at hand, our friends over at Monthly uh, Puro, Puroso? Puroresu? 
Purosu. Yes. The the uh, Japanese wrestling zine that the Shining Wizards were recently featured in. Um, they have paired with us. We did a contest this week. If you followed uh, them and you followed the Shining Wizards and you retweet the tweet, you were entered to win the first four issues of the magazine for free. Uh, and that winner is at Born Heel Adam. So at Born Heel Adam, be sure to reach out to us or monthly uh, Puros, Puro Risu. Puro Risu. Puro Risu. Puro Risu. Uh, to claim your free magazines. And thank you for supporting us and our friends over at Monthly Puro Risu uh, at the Shaking <laughs> with the Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh my goodness gracious boys. Where do we go from here, gentlemen? Did we want all right? So we kind of talked about it. Uh Tony, anything you want to add to that macho man conversation that we had with Dave? Uh spoilers, yes. Um, I don't understand why, but the second half was was pretty much a hatchet job the more I think about it. Um things I didn't realize. Uh, Macho Man was heavily into steroids uh, later in his WCW run. I think, you know, that would be apparent by looking at his appearance, even though some people have said, well, you know, like, was he on steroids? I didn't see it. Did he look like it? If I had to make an opinion? Yes. Uh, apparently, when he got hooked up with Gorgeous George, he was heavily into ecstasy and not only steroids and a whole bunch of other fun time medications, uh, which made him extra paranoid. And spoiler of all spoilers, Gorgeous George uh, found an electrical box. That's what she called it in his closet when she was at his house. And it turns out that the Macho Man may have had some cameras around her apartment spying on her. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what, what the details were behind that because we didn't get them. And when Macho Man came home, Gorgeous George was pretty much like, uh, he's like, what's the matter? And she's like, I got to go. You got to take me home now. And, that's kind of where everything ended. Now they do give you an awesome redemption at the end where it's like macho man kind of like laid off being the macho man, like later on after he was done wrestling, uh, met up again with his high school sweetheart. We all know the story and everything that happened there, but really weird. Like even Bubba, the love, love sponge was, uh, they were playing like song parodies where they make a fun of macho man. And they were kind of like just showing his rap album and saying like he had aspirations, but it didn't do well. And like, just, just, like shit that happened, but like really weird in the story of the Macho Man. Any thoughts? No, I'm gonna have to watch it just to see. Like, I don't understand why, like why we're trying. Look, we know we get that he was paranoid with Liz. Like, we've heard the stories. We saw the dark side. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, I thought these WWE produced vehicles were supposed to, you know make these people's legacy live on like and not only that they do delve a little bit into the whole elizabeth's uh death storyline and they interviewed lex luger it was like the strangest fucking thing it was uh, like at one point i was like i actually went to the to the channel guide to make sure it wasn't a story about macho and liz like i get it they were intertwined for most of their career but why did we have to get this whole like Lex Luger thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, just really strange. Like the different paths they took and like, just to hear the story about him, like potentially like, like spying on, on uh gorgeous Georgia at her house. Like, and they interviewed jo gorgeous George's kid. And the kid was like, yeah, it was cool. Like Randy treated me like I was his son and he took me to Toys R Us and he was buying action figures with me and stuff. And it seemed like Randy, like really took a liking to this kid and they got along really well, but. It was just really strange. Oh, and the best part, they interviewed Gorgeous George's sister, but she didn't want to be on camera to protect her identity, which is really weird because then you get the silhouette talking and it's her, but it's like you don't see her face. I don't I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to have to I don't get I'm going to have to watch it. I don't get it. Like I don't know, like they left out the Piper uh bad news stuff out of his A&E documentary, which I don't think is like something that needs to be in the story. Um, but like this seems like a complete 180 where they're just trying to like fucking bury this poor guy. I was uh, I was chatting it up with uh with Danny Doring on Twitter. I know name drop, and uh yeah, he was like he was like, bro. 
not not so not so much these exact words, but he was like, "Wow, wasn't expecting that," you know. So, yeah, like you were like a Macho Man fan. Like, this is something that's going to appeal to like older wrestling fans. They're gonna watch, tune in, and watch, relive the glory and the great moments. And you get this, and you're like, "Look, our truth, Brian Myers." Like, I don't get it. I don't understand like, it. I'm glad you brought it back up. So Brian Myers is in it. I'm assuming they brought him in because he's a big fan of the macho man. Like they did with like Dan Soder and probably Pete Rosenberg and our truth, but um, they went in and they even talked to like his, his robe designer, which was cool because you got the insight like about like the macho man's outfits, the designs for them, like what he wanted for them, whether or not he was a pain in the ass in designing them because he was very meticulous, all that stuff. But like they brought Brian Myers in and we get it. He's like the figure guy. But then when they were introducing different people, they were showing their action figures on a pedestal. Like, it's like they show our truth Our truth says a line, they put up his name, and then they just show our truths figure, like, doing, like, this little spin. It's like, uh, why? I, 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 well, there's two things that, that I thought of. One, a lot of the stuff was filmed a very long time ago. So maybe they couldn't get Hawkins to do, uh, like, as an intro. So his his stuff may have been filmed, like his conversations may have been filmed months and months or maybe a year ago. And then maybe they just, you know, use his figure to do that. Our truth. I don't know that to be the same thing, but also maybe it was just like their like little creative, you know, little, little creativity in it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But it wasn't, it wasn't like they just showed Brian Myers figure. Like a lot of them, like I, if I remember right, I think they showed Ricky Steamboat's figure too. Like it was just really weird. That's right. They just thought maybe it looked good. I don't know. Hey, the figures look great. They look better than any figures I ever had, but I was just, it just felt really like out of place. Maybe it was a creative decision that just didn't work for me. I don't know. It was just really strange. I just don't get like, I don't get like Rosenberg. I don't get Brian Myers. I don't get R Truth. Like, you couldn't get like DiBiase. You could get like Ric Flair. Well, like Rosenberg told some of the stories well, like the love between Macho and Liz and like that whole thing, how it worked out. Um, but like our truth was like, yeah, his outfits, it did look like a pimp. And the funny thing was like his, his tailor who Hogan introduced him to, to make his robes and whatnot actually made, uh, outfits for local pimps in Tampa. Apparently Tampa was a cesspool according to Bubba the love sponge, but you get the whole story. Like all the wrestlers moved to Tampa. It's a great town in Florida. No, 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 uh, you know, no state income tax, but you know, the whole reason why people moved to Tampa to begin with, you know? But like it just a lot of it felt disjointed and out of place. They um they had a little bit of footage from uh, from Be a Man, like you know, with him rapping and stuff. And of course, Lanny's like, yeah, he wasn't much of a rapper, you know, like a little bit like that, like nothing nothing crazy. But and they showed a lot of the video. I'm sure you remember the shoot interview. I think it was Randy from 2008, where he's wearing like the red shirt, where he's like all like goosed up and stuff with his like it was like the the leather hat on and stuff. So like uh, there was a lot of it with him from that. Um, and then of course they conclude, like, you know, they talk about how he, he met his high school sweetheart again. They got married. Unfortunately he had a heart attack behind the wheel. Like, you know, they, they close it out with all that. And, you know, unfortunately like the, not the happy ending for him, but just a lot of twists and turns. I was not expecting just really like all over the place. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to watch that. Uh... Oh, hundred percent. Definitely worth a watch. hundred percent. They go into like him being like the spokesperson for Slim Jim. Yes, they met because they interviewed Eric Bischoff and they interviewed Lori Bischoff as well. Because apparently, and I never knew, Liz and Lori Bischoff were pretty close for a long time too. I and Lori, oh, and Lori Bischoff was like, this was the whole thing with Liz. She's like, um, you know, we worried about Liz. We tried to talk to her. You know, she always had worries about her looks. Like it came up that she was bulimic, that she was like she had like all these eating disorders because she wanted to make sure she looked good on camera it's fucking wacky dude you gotta see it to believe it wacky yeah it's definitely in the queue for uh, i have a feeling like booker t's gone through some shit in his life i have a feeling there's gonna be a really big drop off with the craziness for next week's episode just just my guess because this one was how about the thing you watched afterwards jerry lawler did Jerry Lawler find any of his treasures or whatever the fuck it's called? I can only imagine what kind of creepy, perverted fucking treasures that ghoul has. Well, Probably they, a lot of Coca-Cola products. They stood away from the creepiness. They went to see our buddy uh, Dave Milliken because Dave Milliken was the owner of 
what was it? It was Jerry Lawler's boots that he wrestled Andy Kaufman in. Oh, really? Because they, they were going on this whole thing. They wanted to find the King's uh, original crown and robe from when he came into WWF. And then it came up that they were looking for Andy Kaufman's neck brace. So when they went to Dave Milliken's house thinking he had it, he didn't have the neck brace, but he had these, these red boots that Jerry wore when he wrestled uh, Kaufman. And then Hell's Bells, guess who had the neck brace? Bill Apter. Bill Apter had the neck brace. <laughs> And Bill Apter being the hell of a guy he is, love me some Bill Apter. He gave them the neck brace absolutely free, 100%. Didn't ask for anything in return for it. Crazy stuff. Is it a good watch, the show? I enjoy it. It's some interesting stuff. I tell you, that guy, AJ, or I, I think that's his name, he's got the fucking best job, dude. He gets to travel around with Jerry Lawler, travel around with Stone Cold, travel with The Undertaker and Kane. Like, yeah, How do you fall into that, dude? It's amazing. That, I know you guys you guys touched upon it earlier about how, like, you know, he's a developmental guy who should be this and that. But I'm telling you right now, this is his role. This is what he this is what developmental does. It finds it finds something for you. And this is God, he he stepped right in it, man. This is this is awesome for him. And uh, I watched the the Mick Foley one. That's the only one that I've seen of this series. And of course, it's it's a reality show, so you know most of it is probably already planned ahead maybe a couple of the ad libs and stuff like that but it's uh it's it's a fun watch if you just if you know what you're getting into it's a fun watch like hearing mick foley differentiate the difference between his socko and the guy who actually did it for like tv socko like that's cool stuff that you just you just don't you wouldn't know unless you watched it so yeah. it's a it's a fun show it's funny because they mention, like, they go into the whole Andy Kaufman thing. They, you know, they talked about, oh, you know what else Dave Milliken owns? You're going to fucking love this. How's this for creepy? He owns the affliction shirt that Jerry Lawler fucking died in. That red shirt he wore on Raw when he had his heart attack and they were resuscitating him. Fucking Dave Milliken wound up with that shirt. And his wife's like, he's like, he's like, I don't know if I feel right about getting this shirt because Jerry Lawler really died in this shirt. And he goes, and his wife said to him, and this is genius. She goes, yeah, but he also came back to life in this shirt. And he's like, how could you argue against that? I got to pick this thing up. So he bought the shirt that Jerry Lawler was wearing when he had his heart attack. Fucking weird. Yeah, but you're into fucking like murder movies and shit and like documentaries. Yeah, but I don't have like fucking Charles Manson paintings in my house. You wouldn't, you wouldn't fucking buy a Charles Manson painting. I if never you said that. Well, so, well, there you go. I just haven't reached that point yet. Well. <laughs> Well, apparently Dave Milliken's got fuck you money, so he could spend that on whatever he wants. Fair enough. I wish I had fuck you money. But it's weird seeing what people trade things for. Like Kane traded all his like stuff for money donations to like a local uh, like children's hospital, things like that. You know, and then Jerry Lawler just take you know flat out takes like a uh, a bit of cash for his crown and his robe. And here's the funny thing, right? So they bring the crown, the robe. The oh, they also found um, shit. Andy Kaufman's sunglasses that he wore when he out and made his appearance in uh whatchamacallit in Memphis. Like the old, you know, the big gold yeah, sunglasses. Yeah. And whatnot. So when they get back to the place, remember Bret Hart's crown? That was Jerry Lawler's crown, and they had it and Jerry Lawler stomped on it. They still have that crown at the warehouse. Huh. It's got the big old stomp print in it. It's a hell of a show. It's a really good show. I like it. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. Uh Blood and guts on Wednesday, boys. You ready for a little uh, war games? Yeah. BG, baby. You You're guys, have to, yeah, you guys have to give me the update on BG. Wednesday. Oh, Ooh, excuse me. Oh. How about uh, how about is twenty twenty one and UG Nagata is going to be on your TV in America on a primetime wrestling show in two weeks. Yo, what is happening in this world right now? Eugene Nagata, um, Matt, do you have a reason why you think they picked him? Or did, did you think Dean Ambrose or uh, John Moxley picked him? John Moxley, called, John Moxley called him out in Japan and said he wanted to fight him. Do, do you think this is like a – was this like a dream match scenario for Moxley? Has Moxley never worked UG or – I don't think he has. God, that's I'm like – I'm all for all this. this. Oh no! Listen, I'm 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 like as a fan, I'm super super pumped, and it's 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 the uh, Tony. Guess what it is, Tony? 
It's the forbidden door. <laughs> it's opening. It's opening an AEW. It's opening an Impact Wrestling. It's opening, baby. Yuji Nagata, John Moxley. How could you go wrong? You can't, and you'll get a preview of it this Friday night on New Japan Strong when John Moxley and Chris Dickinson take on the tag team of Yuji Nagata and Ren Narita. Awesome. Yuji's in the States. Yeah, Yuji's in the States. Oh, baby. State of emergency is what I call it. He's doing Ooh. his thing. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? What else do we have? What else do we have? They made the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania Black Backlash a triple threat. It will now be Bobby Lashley defending against Drew McIntyre and Daniel Braun. Bryan. No, Braun Strowman. Oh. oh, that's right. Oh, your big comeback tonight. Did you guys see it? No, I haven't seen Eva Marie, baby, the evolution. Oh, I like it. You would. <laughs> Dude, she's a beast, man. I don't care what you say. But your pet fucking creamed in his pants. Who? She was a beast on the first season of Total Divas when she was getting fucking railed by her boyfriend. Yeah, well, listen, the camera, get, the camera sometimes you just got to get railed. Tony. What are they doing? I don't know. I don't watch the WWE, so. Whatever. Oh, it's my time. Um, yes, man. <laughs> how do you feel about the recent report? And take it with a grain of salt because it's from the Observer. That MLW is in a is in talks to having some kind of partnership uh, with NXT and having it like a feeder system. MLW being a feeder for NXT, well, yeah, kind of similar to I guess what Evolve was. Yes, I mean I, I guess I'm okay with that. I mean. Look, right now, there's quite a few names in MLW that deserve a shot. And I dare say it's something bigger. I know a lot of those guys love MLW and they're happy there. More power to them. But my God, you've got Alexander Hammerstone. You've got Jacob Fatu. you got Richard Holiday. you got the Von Erichs. Uh, yeah. So many others to name. I mean, I know Leo Rush is already there whatnot, but... You've got so many people on that cusp of something so much bigger than MLW. Give them the shot. I'd love to see Hammerstone in, in NXT. And I'd I, love and to I, see Fatu doing shit in NXT. You know and I, I think this benefits NXT as well because there's also a lot of people in that NXT system that need places to work as well. Uh, so, No, 100%. 100%. So like, because if you're not on TV every week, it's not like NXT has house shows, especially in the pandemic. You're, they have, I mean, what, what they're training, and that's it. And uh, so, if you get guys like, you know, like, uh, you know, August Gray, who who we know as Anthony Green, who's been awesome on 205 Live, send him to MLW, send, you know, some of the new guys like Leon, uh, uh, the guy that's uh, feuding with Swerve right now, Leon, Leon Green, Le Leon Ruff. Yep. Yep. Set, like, boom, send them to MLW for a little bit to work while he's not, you know, training. I think it's a win-win. I think systems like this are a win-win overall. And you got a guy like Court Bauer and you got a guy like Vince, uh, Vince McMahon or whoever is Triple H or whoever it is. I mean, Court Bauer is a smart businessman. He knows what's good. So this only makes sense. It's nice to see, though, at this point that Court Bauer is giving us more than like, hey, we're on the air in Poland. That's great for Poland. Don't really care so well, much. Now they're on the Vice but Network. That's the other thing. Now, I did not get to watch the show on Saturday. I mean... You know, I'm not really home on a Saturday to watch it, but that's a big thing for them too. You know, plus Fusion's yeah. been doing Fusion's been doing well, except for the Los Parks. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, the show that the MLW Fusion that drops Wednesday night is that now going to be the 12 o'clock show on Vice? I don't, I don't think so, but I am not sure. I, I can't tell you for sure. Let me look right now. Because I didn't watch it on Saturday. I have no idea what happened on the card. No, nothing whatsoever. I'm actually kind of excited. I have Vice, so I'm actually going to look, look forward to, to watching this. Well, while you're looking that up, I can fly through the MLW results for the week. Uh, this Do past it. week, Do we it. got a... Uh... Okay, so... Oh, go ahead. Whoops. What was... What's this? Uh oh May... F air date. Oh, so they don't have... What's the latest episode here? That was May 1st. That was on... That was Vice. Okay, Vice so... Saturday. So the, the episode they showed 
well, had Marshall Von Erich against MJF. Wow, that's old as shit, dude. Yeah, this looks like uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Simon Gotch. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Yes. Why would they show these old matches on their debut show on Saturday? Well, why, why would ECW do it? <laughs> I mean, look, this one we got we got injustice with uh with Mark Adam Haggerty still doing uh the announcer. Oh, that's a oh. name I never. Wait, he's on the show? Yeah, oh, yeah did ring announcing all like the last season. They like, kept season that. Before. This is in, uh, someone from Injustice taking on Drago. Oh yeah, this these are old. They're showing old episodes of Fusion. Someone's got to get on that. And then it looks like, how do I go back here? Press the back button. I don't have a back button here. Press the front button twice. It looks like there's a uh, Brian Pillman Jr. against Fatu in a couple weeks and uh, a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, so I, I, uh, I guess it's kind of like a catch me up show on Vice for now until they catch get me back. Up from what two years ago? I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> look, I was on the cusp of not watching MLW. It actually has been ha- on quite a bit of a turnaround lately. But come on, man, you got to do better than that on a Saturday. Like I get it. Once in a while, you want to run an old MLW fusion. You know when you when you're trying to you know take a week off from going through what you taped. But still, man, you you got a brand new What's Saturday show. You can't be airing shit from like two years ago. Saturday at noon, though. It's Nobody's Saturday at noon. It's not like it's. It's just it's just weird like but you're tuning in and like half the people you named aren't even with the company anymore i I, look i didn't watch the show so maybe they do uh maybe they say like these are some this is what mlw is about this is what it looks like maybe you it the familiar faces pull you in but i don't know familiar who are they familiar to mjf if you're an AEW fan mj okay mj okay Okay. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that that recognize Davy Boy Smith Jr. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what, if this is just they're gonna run replays until they start doing their live stuff in July when they go back to live crowds. I don't know. I don't Maybe. know. I don't know. Well, you watched MLW this week, Tony. Ross Von Eric beat Dominic Garini with a with. With a what you would call it, with a falcon arrow, it was actually a pretty good match. Kevin Koo was there, Marshall Von Eric was at ringside. Uh, and nothing much more to say about that. Next week, Leo Rush, Myron Reed, part two. Leo Rush defends the MLW World Middleweight Championship in that one. Uh, let me see. Oh, oh so here's hey, the thing. Oh, Phil Tom, what you see me, or are you reading the results? On the no, screen? I'm reading the re- I'm going through the results. Why? Uh, What's I have up? My hand up. I have a question. Sorry, go ahead, dickhead. It's all right, fine, sure. I'm a dickhead. What's your question? Fuck knows. Mm. Why is Tom Waller calling this fucking referee? I was getting to that. You interrupted me. Interruptus Maticus over here. Well, I have I didn't watch the show, so I have questions for the dude that watched the show. Because he wanted Marshall Von Eric to take a piss test because he thinks Marshall Von Eric might be doing the steroids. He's a fucking you know what? Tom Waller is a bitch. He's running like a bitch from the Von Erics. Sure, running like a bitch, but Marshall Von Eric took a piss test and it came back negative, so he was more than happy to throw the piss at Tom Lawler's face. Oh, uh, no, all- we're throwing piss? What is this, a Vince McMahon vehicle? And it got all over Alicia Toot, so Marshall Von Eric apologized oh. on Twitter for getting piss all over Alicia. <laughs> you think, uh... You, you think, think she liked it? Maybe not. <laughs> Was it like, do you think it was real piss or was it a uh, working piss? Oh, I hope it was real. How good No, it's not real it. piss. No one agrees to get real piss thrown on them. But why would you suggest it? What's wrong with you? Because you could gimmick piss. Oh, boy. Could just be lemonade. There was supposed to be a media session for Leo could Rush less, and Meyer Could Reed. be less salty piss. So Leo Rush decided to skip the press conference so Court Bauer find him. Whoop the fucking do Who cares. I fucking am so over Leo Rush. Buku Dow is on a two match winning streak because he beat tag team champion Hijo de LA Park in a fucking good little match. I like Buku Dow. I- I'm digging the situation. I like him. No thoughts. You just make it. No, but it's not the match I have a problem with. It's the nonsense afterwards. 
So in this episode of MLW, we've gotten piss thrown on somebody, and now there's been a kidnapping. Oh, Selena got kidnapped because she pissed off El Jefe. What? A, I don't understand. It she's done back everything he's asked. She doesn't get in the ring and wrestle. She can't help it if the fucking parts are a bunch of fucking losers. Yeah, but apparently we don't know that what she didn't listen to El Jefe. She went against El Jefe's orders. Do I know what she did? No, but she pissed off El Jefe, and that means she gets a bag over her head and she gets taken away. Look, Contra has been putting people in body bags. We still don't know where fucking Shima is after two seasons. They I caught him put off. A body bag. Well, the, Under, I mean, the Undertaker put people in a body bag. Yeah, well, Selena got kidnapped. I was sleeping in a body bag once when I walked into a hotel room. Wait, 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 wait. You cannot <laughs> complain about Selena getting kidnapped where there were two fucking kidnappings back to back episodes on AEW last fall. In case you didn't remember, Marco Stunt was one of them. And I know you don't fucking like him, but God damn it, he was kidnapped. Nobody. So you can't shit on a kidnapping storyline when you do a podcast about a wrestling show that did kidnappings on a weekly basis. I just don't like this kidnapping story. There's no, I don't, there's no substance here. What is going on? What's the maybe, story? Maybe she goes through an Azteca transformation. Maybe she comes back. Uh, I don't like, want uh, to transform into a fucking butterfly or whatever bullshit they're going to do. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure El Jefe is gonna turn her into La Mariposa or something like that. Fucking, yeah, La Mariposa. She's gonna have fucking cat's eyes. She's gonna be all weird looking. I don't care. Should be a fucking snake. <laughs> so let me ask you this now: Alicia too catches up to Hammerstone. Is she still covered in piss, or did she get a chance to clean up? <sighs> Drenched. Yes, she she thirsty. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Oh boy. Um so and let me see. I don't know. Joseph Samuel cut another promo. Who gives a shit? Uh there's supposed to be something about Contra next week. I don't know. Who cares? We're getting to our main event. I want to fucking get through this. Who cares? Next week it's uh they control all the title shots or something weird. Who gives a shit? We'll find out next week. I bet you it's a fucking abortion of a fucking idea anyway. Yeah, I said it. I used the A word. Fight me. Jesus. Oh, hey, abortion I said, it happens. I just said oh, Uva, that's all. So apparently Marshall Von Eric's knee is still hurting him from two years ago, but you didn't fucking realize it in all the matches leading up to this. This was, I don't know. It was a fine match. It was just weird shit. Like there was a fucking wrench. It's like, if you're going to use the wrench, use the wrench and finish the match. But the wrench was just the fucking like kill the hope spot. It was just really weird. I don't know. Filthy Tom wins when fucking when Marshall passes out. I I don't know. Some nonsense. So then we get the fucking Texas boys all fighting. ACH comes out. They all just kind of brawl. It's another one of those schmas finishes, but Filthy Tom gets the win. I don't know. You have questions because I really don't have the answers. I don't are know. They, is Are they dragging this out just so they we can get the payoff in front of fans? I think so because they made it. They made an announcement. You know, of course, July 10th is on sale right now. They're going back to the 2300 arena. I'm assuming they're going to do all their tapings there. That may be finally where we get Hammerstone and and Fatu. Hopefully, maybe we could start getting on to the next chapter here. Maybe this fucking Tom Lawler and Von Erichs thing goes away. We could start moving on from that. Maybe these guys can get a shot at their tag titles again. I don't know. I don't know. I know. Booker promoter, but I would assume Fat Two Hammerstone is a pay per view. Fine, maybe maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Phil Ray is going there on July 10th anyway, so we can get a field report from him. Oh, he's gonna go there and be fucking miserable for four hours. Well, apparently he's got tickets from last time they canceled, so I guess they cashed him in. I don't know. What do you th- what do you think the M and MLW stands for? <laughs> miserable. <laughs> Clearly mm. miserable if you go with Phil. He was fucking miserable when I went down there with him. Thank it's, God I sat with fucking Rob from the Bullet Club. We had a good time. So MLW gets an okay this week. Eh, whatever. It's an okay? I, I Maybe not even. I don't know. I'm in a good mood, so it's okay. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> we got a, we, we got, a, we got a top five or top ten, or what is it? What do they do? Nope. No top ten this week. Uh, nothing this week. They oh, kept okay, you. You got to stay on the edge of your feet. The edge of your feet. What the edge f- of your seat. We just got the name of the episode. <laughs> Kevin, have you uh, have you settled into your Thursday night impact? 
Ooh, I'll tell you what, it's it's throwing me for a loop, Matt. This whole Thursday thing has got me all, all sorts of out of whack. But uh, yes, I have been. I've been uh, live tweeting the shows, as as you guys probably know. A lot of good feedback. So I thank all the the boys and girls of Impact Wrestling for uh, for showing me love and showing us love on the old Twitter ski. It's 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 a great show. And right now we're going right. We're moving forward uh, towards a six man, you know, multi man match for the number one contender for Kenny Omega as you know, is the impact, the collector of gold, Kenny Omega. So you got, I think, Chris Bay. You got Matt Cardona, my dear good friend, is in there. Yeah, he I believe you also. Himself, huh? Yeah, which is weird. I'd rather have Brian Myers win this match and have Cardona go over on uh, on the PPV. Well, tough now. Um, fucking Matt Cardona is in a match for the number one contendership spot. Yeah, and you saw Taylor Wilde come back, um, defeating uh, Kimberly. Tony, did you happen to get a look at uh, Taylor Wilde's gear? Nope. How is it, Matt? Did you Wild? No, is it? Uh, I feel like it was like a candy striper, maybe, or no? Is the red, white, and blue like the kid from Stranger Things? Very, very Lacey Evans esque, and I don't know if she did this first or not, but it's like, it's like I thought I was watching Lacey Evans wrestle on Impact. So I mean, she's she's a legend. She may have worn this before. I have no idea, but uh, it was very it was very weird seeing that big cast. Of course, W Morsey is on Impact now. Looks like a million bucks. Destroyed some J Brown. Ah. Fun show, you know, man. Kevin. Kev, Fun I'm sorry. I just, I just pulled up the picture. You're absolutely right. That is very Lacey Evans esque. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but she may have done it first, though. For all I know, so I'm not trying to call her a poser or anything. No, I mean it like, looks like it. I don't like. I'm, I'm not saying who's first or whatnot, but definitely 100. percent I could see it. Jeez, wow. Woof. Mod on. So the big story from this match was. Um, or excuse me, from this episode of Impact was Kenny Omega had to show up. Oh, yeah. Duh. They were going to strip the title from him. Right. And then they were stuff. playing the whole thing out over over time where he wasn't there. He wasn't going to show up. But we all, we all knew that to be a fallacy. Well, here's my question to you now, Kevin. All it right, seems like on. there's a little bit of tension between Sammy Callahan and Don Callis. We got a non-finish to the Eddie Edwards Sammy Callahan match. So what do we do about that spot in the six-way match? And it looks like it's going to be Eddie Edwards and Finn Juice against the Good against Brothers and Kenny Omega at Under Siege. Under Siege. If they go Eddie Edwards and Kenny Omega forward, I I don't know. I kind of want to see Sammy Callahan versus Kenny Omega well, as I like, think they're going to I think that's the direction they're going. I think so too, Matt. Cuz why cause the tension between two like bad guys if you're not going to either turn one of them or just make it a bad guy? Well, you're not going to turn Kenny Omega obviously, but but I I think to me like the draw if you're not going to put Moose in there, which I think he deserves to be in consideration as well, and I don't know, I think there's three more matches next week or maybe four. Um, I think you got to go. I think the money, the draw, if you will, is Callahan Omega. Yeah, absolutely. And it's three matches next week. Moose against James Storm, Rhino, Chris Sabin, and Trey Miguel against Rohit. All right. So, you, oh, God, poor son of a bitch, Rohit. Um, so, you know, Trey Miguel. So, you know, Trey Miguel is winning that one. Um, you said Moose and James Storm. James Storm. Yep. Moose is probably winning that. And then you had one that Rhino and Chris Sabin. Yes. That one. That's the only one that's kind of a toss up to me. I probably Rhino is the new push with the the violent by design, but Sabin is Sabin. I feel, I feel like Sabin's probably going to be in that. And that's going to round out the. And then I don't, yeah, to round out the field, unless, unless Eddie Edwards and Callahan. Do something else. Yeah. They got to do something, right? Plus, they made the huge announcement: the Forbidden Door, wide open. El Fantasmo will be on Impact next week, which is fucking awesome. You gonna watch it? 
Am I, if I, what is, I don't even know what my schedule is like, dude, I forget that uh, NXT is on Tuesday nights. And when I check Twitter Tuesday nights, I'm like, why the fuck is everyone talking about NXT? Oh, cause it's on Tuesdays. It's on Tuesdays now. <laughs> uh, if I can find time to watch it live Thursday, I will, if not, I'll try and catch it over the weekend. Um, but uh, maybe I'll just find the match impact is not, and this is nothing to do with the product. It's just, I don't have tons of time. So I have to pick and choose what I want to watch. In fact, is is pretty far down the list uh, when it comes to what I want to watch. But it looks like things are going strong um, in the Impact world. Uh, Tyler Wild, Tyler, Taylor, Taylor Wild. She will face uh, Susan this Thursday night. Uh, plus those three qualifying matches, and ELP makes his debut. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Awesome, I like it. Yeah, it's uh, it looks like Impact's doing great things, and it'll be exciting to see as we get closer to Slam Anniversary and after who uh, lands in Impact from the uh, the recent set of cuttings. See, that's yeah, the and you saw the promos with those with those people on it. It's crazy. It's crazy to think what could happen. Um, one quick WWE note as we head towards NWA Power, uh, they did an angle on SmackDown. Roman Reigns beat Daniel Bryan and essentially Daniel Bryan had to uh, be ba- if he lost the match, he would be banished from SmackDown. So Roman Reigns beat him uh, in an unprecedented 30 minutes, uh, something you don't see on a weekly wrestling show. And now the WWE has really played it up. They've moved Daniel Bryan to the alumni section on their website. Roman Reigns is the big dog. Um, if you could pick, what do you do with Daniel Bryan? Oh, that's a good question. It's loaded. Depends on what his objectives are. If what I would do with Daniel Bryan, you can't have him beat Roman. I'd move him to Raw. I, I think me haven't beat haven't beat Lashley. I think me and Tony might be on the same page. What are you guys thinking? I send him to NXT. Hundred percent. Ding, correct. No, I don't. He wants to work with those young guys. Well, if that's the case, then yeah, of course. And he'll be able to wrestle the style that he probably wants to wrestle. Um, And Daniel Bryan's going to bring some eyeballs to NXT. You don't think the numbers will change with Daniel Bryan on NXT? You're crazy. Crazy. You talk about moving the needle, that will fucking move the needle. 100%. Daniel Bryan getting the view he do? 100%. I can't disagree. I can't disagree with it. Daniel Bryan, Johnny Gargano, fucking sign me up. I just love. What, all right, we didn't talk about NXT last week. What are your thoughts about Kyle O'Reilly? Apparently, people are saying that he's like the new, or he's like the Orange Cassidy light because he wore like his jeans. And if you didn't see it, I'll let you know. He wore jeans, sunglasses, like a like a cabana wear hat, like a fedora, like uh, denim on denim. And people were, I I didn't notice it at the time, but people are comparing him to to orange cassidy they're comparing his outfit to orange cassidy he's not like fucking putting his dumb hands in his no exactly he's still a badass motherfucker yeah he's just fucking rocking that canadian tuxedo let him do him that's it he's he is changing his character and he's distancing himself from what he was in the undisputed era and i think that's a good thing 100 percent. i'm with you man i'll tell you what i don't think was a good thing tony Uh oh what's that I watched NWA Power this afternoon. Thank you so much. Into the fire. Well, get it's. I'm gonna be all over the place. The shit with the women was fucking awful. There's no ex. There's no explanation. And if I miss this, please correct me, Tony. There's no explanation as to why Melina and Thunder Rosa are now buddy buddy. Did I miss something? Nope, you missed absolutely nothing. I think they stuck them together because they're both Latino slash Mexican. Other than that, no idea. Okay, so Kevin Thunder Rosa said she doesn't need Molina. Molina keeps like glomming on, saying like I'm here for Thunder Rosa. I don't get it. I don't get why two women who could speak for themselves had to get involved with this mishmash where they had to have people speak for them. I don't get that either. This I hated whole it. Thing was a what the fuck moment. Kevin, I'm gonna paint you a picture, right? Kyle Davis comes out. He's a bald headed fella. He's the, uh, I don't know, the, the interview guy. 
All right. We're going to have a little debate. We're going to have a conversation. I don't know what the fuck they're trying to do here. Right. They're going to bring out Thunder Rosa and Camille, but Thunder Rosa and Camille aren't allowed to speak to each other. They're going to have representatives come out and speak for them. I see. So Thunder Rosa chooses Melina, who Why? I don't know. I don't know either. There's they used to have a history and then they played up this little thing where they uh the Molino's trying to help Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa didn't want her help. Molina says she needs her help, but we never really got a bow on that story because Molina comes out and they hug and they embrace and now they're cool. Camille, she doesn't know. She has nobody else, so she brings out Taryn Terrell. And Taryn Terrell's playing this like blonde, bubblegum, ditzy. It's it was probably the worst thing the NWA has done. F minus on this thing, hundred percent terrible. Wow, F minus. Terrible. Melina, she's a world champion. This, that, the other thing. Taryn Tyrell's like, I don't understand anything you just said because none of it makes sense, and I don't know why you're even speaking. And then it was the worst. It wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't for the Tamron Terrell. I could have given this a D minus, maybe a D, but she was just fucking dog shit. Dog I shit, hate, dude. I hated this. The rest of the show I thought was put together very nicely. Yeah. Old Booger Eater caught a 30 day because fucking Salvinaro distracted Tim Storm. What the fuck, dude? Salvinaro is going to get his ass kicked. Do you think, Tony, is this any different than what they would produce on the free YouTube show? Do you think maybe they're changing their format to try to get people to buy it? Maybe changing character? I don't don't know. I'm just, do you think that has anything to do with it at all? No, because it doesn't seem like it's anything out of the ordinary, Kev. I mean, I just don't know what their game plan is with this. It doesn't follow any kind of coherent story when it comes to the women. It doesn't make sense. Like, look, everything else that happened on the show uh, had a great story to it. You got Sal Renaro and Kratos again, and Tim Storm kind of like was jumping in and whatnot. Um, Trevor Murdoch was wanting an apology from Nick all this Nick all this is kind of like dodging the question about giving him an NWA title shot he's like you know uh, we'll have a six man if your team wins you'll get a shot at the national title you get your revenge at Chris Adonis but if you lose you're getting 30 days and Trevor Murdoch's kind of like you're running from me you know I want a shot at that at that big belt and you're not giving it to me what's up and Nick Aldis just plays it off. He's like I know you really want it you're not good enough for this belt so it's all layers there. We got Jack Stane and Slice Boogie. Slice Boogie's calling out Jack Stane, saying, me and a guy who fucking met five minutes before the match beat you and Crimson, who's an established tag team. So he's like, I don't lose, I win. Great promo by these two guys. Everything else was great. The Pope and Tyrus, I didn't... Sorry, Matt, go ahead. No, no, you were good. Get, say your piece about the Pope and Tyrus, because then I got some words. Okay. Austin Idol, still don't like him so much. This, the ending for this... Not great. However, I didn't mind the Pope Tyrus match except for the ending. I thought I thought it was pretty good. Pope fighting from underneath most of the time. What you didn't like that one? Look, I don't like Austin Idol. If he's I, gonna come out though, either be on fucking commentary or be fucking ringside. You can't ping pong and have the announcers be like, "What is he doing now? Where is he going? Why is he getting up again?" Just fucking be one or the other. And then he came out. You know what? And it wouldn't been it wouldn't have been so bad if he only got up once. But he got up fucking twice. And he came mm-hmm. back to commentary after the first time. I'm like, this is fucking dumb. Yeah, the, the first time when he got involved, it was just to grab the Pope's leg, which he really didn't need that distraction. That didn't make sense. And then the second time, he just kind of stood there while they were fighting outside the ring. It was yeah. it was it was weird. Everything else in between was fine, but. And I still can't stand Velvet Sky on commentary, dude. She's got to speak up. She's got to talk. She's got to enunciate. And she's got to fucking be better at, like, you know, getting involved with the storytelling. It's rough, dude. There's nothing wrong with Joe Galley and Tim Storm. They were fucking fantastic together. You throw Velvet Sky in there, half the time it's like they just fucking let her talk to let her talk. And then they kind of pretend that she's not even there anymore. I don't. Uh, I really enjoyed the main event and the story that told. Yes. A A lot of curveballs there. Tim Storm taking the place of Sal Renaro. Aaron Stevens going to wrestle against his tag team partner. But they didn't. They didn't touch each other, but they, they were not. Touch. 
I, I get that, but it was kind of cool when the two of them were in the ring at the same time. And then was it Kratos that tagged out first? One of them tagged out like they after they were looking at each other. I want to say Kratos, was they were looking at each other and Tim Storm tagged in. That's right. That's right. So you don't then, get that. Right. And then Kratos that's, tagged out because Kratos that's, that's, wanted to storm. That's simmering. That's simmering. After Kratos was calling Storm out at the beginning of the show. I kind of dug that. However, your buddy, the booger eaters on a, on a vacation now for 30 days. All right. Now there, I think there's two options we get with booger eater. Okay. I don't think the NWA would do this because I think it's in poor taste, but they would put him under the question mark mask and have him come back for four weeks and terrorize Nick Aldis. As the question mark, or do you do like a little takeoff on the Midnight Rider with just a different gimmick? Or the Dark Patriot. Yeah, I think you're going to get him under a mask as like, whatever, the Texas Booger Eater. (laughs) (laughs) I thought I I like that a lot, actually. I think it'll be a fun four. So he's out for the next 30 days leading up to the pay-per-view. but I think it'll be a fun four weeks. I think if he comes I don't in, think it'd be in bad taste, Matt, actually, now that I think about it. I think if question I, mark, though? Wait, is, is that what they're planning on doing? Or is that what I you don't, think? I don't think they are, but, you know, because of the Aaron, Steven thing, Aaron Stevens connection to Trevor Murdoch, he was part of this match. If done well, if done, like, appropriately, I think it could be fun. Actually, no, never mind. I don't think I could. I think under a regular mask is still a home run. Agreed. That I agree with. I hate to admit it, but he is the top baby face in the NWA right now. Old booger eater. Old booger eater, small nips. And we got, look, there's the tag team. The tag team champs are at, at there's, there's some dissension there. So I, th- I think before this pay-per-view, I think, Latimer and Chris Adonis are your tag champions, or Latimer and Crotus or Kratos. Yeah, but they'd have to work. They'd have to work a whole lot of different things to get Kratos on that title. At that point, they'd have to. They'd have to have some dummy team win the titles and then take it off of them. No. Or they could just be at odds, and Aaron Stevens says, "If I beat you in a one-on-one match." Oh. I both tag title. I don't know. I'm just saying there's a lot of ways they can go here. If if they did that where they each pick partners and then the winning team takes the titles, I could see that. I hate tag titles going in a one-on-one match. I just hate it. Hate it. Hate it. If you're going to do it, then then have Aaron Stevens pick a partner and then let Kratos team up with uh with Latimer and do it that way. So what was your other idea? Do you have another idea? No, I think that was my only idea. Okay. Mm. I thought you said two. Sorry. Uh, but that was, I love, I, outside of the women's thing and Austin Idol, I thought it was a great episode. Um, I'm looking forward to this pay per view in June. I am too. 100%. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I watched Ring of Honor today. Ooh, uh, I heard we got a new champ. We do have a brand new TV champion. Mr. Tony Deppin stole, uh, stole a victory over Tracy Williams, House House Tracy Williams. It was a really great match. And Deppin's uh, part of Violence Unlimited, right? He is. So I think this is just the beginning of the Violence Unlimited, uh, um, f- the foundation troubles here. Uh, we also saw Beer City Bruiser had a new tag team partner. Ken oh, Dixon. your BFF, Matt. Your BFF. Ken Dixon sucks. Um, but I won't lie. He did, he did okay here. He made a lot of rookie mistakes. So it was Ken Dixon and Beer City Bruiser against uh, Bennett and Taven with Brian Malonis on commentary. Ken Dixon makes a lot of rookie mistakes. Beer City Bruiser ends up on the losing end. Post-match, Matt Taven gives him a receipt for smashing a bottle over his head, and he smashes a bottle over the Beer City Bruiser's head. Oh, David Ligarecca style. <laughs> this that makes makes Brian Milano say, you know what? Fuck this noise. I see what Beer City Bruiser's talking about now. He beats the dog shit out of Ken Dixon, and it looks like the bouncers are back with a very mean streak, uh, a very big mean streak. So look out, Ring of Honor tag team world, because these two are not looking good. And then the Bandito-Flamita match, that Flamita, he's a dirty son of a bitch. He used a low blow. 
he's a dirty son of a bitch. He used a low blow to beat Bandito and steal a victory. So there's obviously still some some pl- problems in the Mexa Bloods. Your Women of Honor uh, match next week is Angelina Love against Quinn McKay. If Angelina Love wins, she gets a first round bye. If she loses, she's out. Out of the tournament. Also, CMLL and Ring of Honor are officially done working together. Yeah, I heard about that. Hmm. Um, who who did they start a promotion? Was there another promotion that Roosh and all them went to work for? So it looks like I have this in my notes here. That's okay. It was a little convoluted. I could use a little a little splaining, Lucy. Okay. Oh, so you know, the, you know what the C and CMLL stands for? Convoluted. They're going to say, see you later, Roosh. Oh, you can do that, too. Uh, I believe. I this, believe I can fly. Go ahead. I believe this is Rush, Roosh and his family's promotion, brand new promotion, uh, Federation Wrestling. Oh, they FMW. Will have, they will have their debut pay-per-view on June 19th. Uh, and they announced that uh, Roosh will be involved. Bestia Dale Ring. Um Matt Taven, PJ Black, Alberto El Patron, and the recently released Andrade. Wait, Alberto El Patron? Hey, is he run, that, run that third name by me again. Alberto Del Patron. Alberto El Patron. Yeah. He's wrestling? He's supposed he, to be in jail. Um, Trial starts Monday, I think. <laughs> C C C. I guess. I mean, I guess you can work if you're, if you're, if you're not in jail, if you're out on bail. But he's up on trial for some heinous shit. His first match, or excuse me, the match with Andrade is not supposed to take place till uh, July 31st. He started today uh, on uh, trial. He must. He must really think he's getting away with this shit. Yo, he did some bad shit. This is like worse than some Me Too shit this guy did. Yeah, it's not this a good thing. Like, legit, like, like, throw away the key type. Yeah, shit. this is like, like, okay, like the hell is there, keep them there. Type shit. Shit. Holy fuck, dude. And Andrade's okay with working with him? Wow. Where's all the SJWs on Twitter? Andrade's looking for that payday, son. Andrade's uh, got a match coming up with Kenny Omega, doesn't he? He challenged Kenny Omega for the AAA Mega Championship. Now, how could Andrade wrestle for, for FU and then also wrestle for AAA at the same time? Because I'm sure there's a working relationship there or Andrade is not signed to one particular company. Fair enough. Good Remember, point. the working relationship is with CMLL. That is out the window. Chamel, chamel. Uh, in addition to Kenny Omega and possibly Andrade wrestling for the AAA Mega title, it looks like the Impact Women's title will be on the line when Diana Perazu takes on Fabi Apache. Oh, yeah. Knockout's title against the Reina de Reina's title. Kev, Forbidden Doors. Oh, listen, they're everywhere. Like, uh, it's uh, like Webster's House, a the TV show from 1985. <laughs> all the trap doors and all I those passageways. I always wanted a grandfather clock with a ladder behind it. That looks so cool to me. Listen, Join New Japan Wrestling or AEW and you could get one. <laughs> they haven't announced where this year's Triple Mania will be taking place, but those are the first two matches they announced. Uh, Jake Lee, he won All Japan Wrestling's Champion Carnival Tournament. So, uh, Did he challenge Muto? Oh, no, wait, Muto's, Muto's Noah, sorry. No, he will challenge uh, Suwama. Suwama! Baby, that's my man. Your man is Suwama? Yes, he is. I drafted him in the fucking Shining Wizards draft last year. We doing another one this year? You know who's not your man? Okay. Fuck. Fuck you. We go should A's. do another one. We should do another one. We should. Go Ace. Go Ace can go wherever he wants because his bag's going to be about 10 pounds lighter because he ain't your never open weight champion anymore, bitch. That's not cool. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you over Jay White's celebration. Oh. I thought Jay White was ready to hang himself. Jay White is the first and only wrestler to hold the IWGP heavyweight title, intercontinental title, U.S. title, and the never open weight title. 
I think, he, I think he also merged the Intercontinental and the Hardcore Championship, too, if I'm not mistaken. Former European champion. Too. That's right. Close to 40-minute match. It is an instant classic. Check it out when you get the chance. It was the first night of wrestling Dantaku. The second night takes place this evening. Will Ospreay Shingo, El Desperado against Yo. Uh, I enjoyed the latter match for the fingers, the iron fingers, too. I thought that was very entertaining. Tai Chi got those iron fingers, son. Hi-ya. Gonna get him up his ass if he's not careful. You watch your mouth about Tai Chi, you son of a Fuck bitch. Him, fucking oh, fake yeah. fucker. Don't you dare. He's got the voice of an angel. Don't make me play his music. Fuck off. Um, Dark Side of the Ring on Thursday. New one? Brian, yeah, Brian Pillman. This is the first one of the season. First one of the season. Apparently, the first half is already up on YouTube. Wait, wait, wait. It didn't air yet on Vice, though. No, that will happen Thursday night. It's a two-hour episode. So, yeah, why do they put it on YouTube first? So you're... people will watch it, and then they'll want to watch the second half? Oh, the second half is on is the premiere. No, oh. the, they're premiering the whole thing on TV, but they, they leaked the first hour, I guess. First, yes, the first hour is on YouTube right now, so you can watch the first hour. If you want to see the second hour... You have to tune in Thursday night on Vice. But mm. Thursday's going to be the full two hours. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Um, so this they broke this season up into two parts. So the first season, obviously, Pillman. We will also get Collision in Korea. Oh, that's the one I'm waiting for. Nick Gage. That's a super under-the-radar one. I don't know how that made it like national clearance. I don't know. How many mean, people do you think in this country know who Nick Cage is? They're going to, he fucking robbed the bank. And went oh, to I know. Japan. We know. And now he's probably the biggest independent wrestler in America. How many F bombs are going to air in that episode? I think he was the only independent wrestler named in uh, Sports Illustrated's top 10 wrestlers of the year. I did not Nick know that. Gage is, Nick Cage is over as fuck with those oh. fans. Oh, well, I'm not well, denying well, that at all. Nick Cage is a freaking, me- is a star. I just, re- I didn't realize he was. Super over enough to get a TV special on him. Sports oh. Illustrator or SI.com? I'd, I'd have to look at that. There's a big it. fucking difference if it's SI.com. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> uh, and then these two are going to be gems Dynamite Kid. Woo-hoo. And Ice Train. No, here's the one I'm really looking forward to because it's going to be so cringeworthy. Grizzly Smith. David the Greco, Thunder Rosa. Oh, oh. They got old Grizzly in there. That shit's going to be dark as fuck. They got Jake for that one, of course, didn't they? I'm sure they got uh, I'm sure they got Jake. Maybe they got Rock and Robin. Maybe they got Sam Man. Houston. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, but Matt, didn't t- didn't we already know this like in the like in the Jake documentary? Didn't we already learn all this stuff? We learned about Jake's demons. We did not learn about what he did to Rock and Robin. What did Jake do to Rock and Robin? Jake didn't do anything to Rock and Robin. Grizzly. Okay. Grizzly. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Move on. <laughs> True. Um, the second season, which they're saying will premiere later in the summer, will cover the WWF steroid trials. Ooh. FMW. Oh. Interesting. Luna Vachon. Really interesting. Uh, WWE's plane ride from hell in 2000. That's going to be a sleeper. Yo, season two is looking much better than season one right now. Uh, Rob Black's XPW promotion. All right. That, that could be interesting too. Uh, a callback from our uh, episode uh, Friday night that we recorded. Uh, Johnny K9. Who is Bruiser <laughs> Bedlam. The African American star. And Chris Canyon. I'm telling you what, I'm more intrigued by the second half than the first half. Uh, They both got their pluses and minuses. I can't wait to watch this shit. Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy is right. Dark side. That's right. Thursday night. And that's all I really got, boys. Uh, We had another long show. We had a great time with Dave LaGreca and Ice Train. We'll Hope be you back. guys enjoyed Dave's last ap- uh, appearance on The Shining Wizards. No, I'm going, baby. I'm making it happen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go. He's going to fucking hate me. Who? I'm going. Let's Dave. do it. 
a Uber, be a hundred dollar Uber ride both ways. Well, unless you do a rain dance and maybe Matt could drive you. No, but that's not to get to Morristown. That's true. Take like the, oh, train. That's a good point. Choo-choo. Anybody with ice train? I'll take the ice that? train. I'd like to thank Ice Train and Dave LeGreca for joining us. Uh, listen to everybody on the Shining Wizards Network, including the Mark Order podcast. They've been chopping it up on Wednesday nights. Ryan Schlong made his podcasting debut this past Wednesday. Don't forget, Midnight Jury's got new episodes. Inconclusive Breakdown, Wrestling Night in Canada, Ringside Rant, Radioactive Metal, and of course, TBTB, Turnbuckle Throwbacks. Everybody had new episodes last week. Check them all out, ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. Follow me at Big Tony Z on the Twitter machine, and that's all I got. Uh, follow me, I guess, on the old Twitter at Kevin Garifo on the Instagram at Shining Wizards Kevin. Atlantic City, June twenty fifth and June twenty seventh at the Showboat Boardwalk Buds. You like to, if you like to smoke, you don't like to smoke. Come down and hang out. There'll be comedy, uh, two nights a week, nightclubs, all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, check that out, baby. And Matt is deep in thought. Be sure to tune in next week, episode 532. We'll have uh, Perch, who is a independent wrestling referee out in the Milwaukee right. area. Milwaukee Tom is a good friend of him, uh, and he suggested him to us. And Mike Spear, who is a illustrative comic book writer, will be joining us for about 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes next week to talk about his upcoming projects. Plus, uh, all we got blood and guts fallout. We're going to another NWA episode, another MLW, NXT, Impact. So much wrestling news. You never know, but you come here for all of it uh, on the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. And Matt's taking English lessons next week live on the show. Tune in for that. Mm. Uh, what else did I butcher? Nothing. I'm just, you know, figure preventive measures. I, I don't know if that's going to work. I'm going to go make, uh, let's see, what's tonight's HelloFresh? A chicken schnitzel. Ooh. Good. If you don't like it, you can stick it your ass. No, there will be nothing in my coolie. In your hiney hole. See so you guys. Your match ass is going to sound like yeah. after you eat these fucking schnitzels tonight. Your face. See you guys next week.